sing. One, two, thank you so much. The one, two. Is the Luchi Pink on? Please pass me my phone there. Just timing myself. <laughs>
just waiting for the YouTube link, so I'm not sure whether I should start say something. Because now it's already quarter past nine. They're trying to see whether it's on. Right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Very good morning to all of us. And good morning to all those who are joining us virtually. Um, we are still trying to check our technical abilities to see whether we are linked on our YouTube link. So we would officially start at 20 past nine, if you could just be patient with us. My name is Dr. Irene Mampa. When we start, I will introduce myself officially again. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Good morning. Very good morning to all of us. Is it okay? And good morning to all those who are joining us virtually. Um, we are still trying check our technical abilities to see whether we are linked on our YouTube link. So we would officially start at 20 past 9, if you could just be patient with us. My name is Dr. Irene Mampa. When we start, I will introduce myself officially again. Thank you very much. So it's going slower than what we expected, but we try to change the date. slower than 
Morning, colleagues. Good morning, colleagues, and welcome. Huyo More, Locheni, Dimacheroni, Dumelang. It is a pleasure for us to be together in this momentous occasion. My name is Dr. Irene Mampa. I'm Head of Health at Impala Platinum Mine. I've been working at Impala. In actual fact, this May, I would have been there for 20 years. At Impala Platinum Mine, we cater for about 50,000 employees and 17,000 dependents. I am a member of the Mine Health and Safety Council and a member of the Mineral Council of South Africa. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and for those joining us virtually. As we today commemorate the 2022 World TV Day commemoration for the South African mining industry, which is hosted by the Mine Health and Safety Council under the umbrella of which we've got our tripartite structures in collaboration with the Mineral Council of South Africa, under which the umbrella there, we've got the Masoise health programs, which assist us a lot in combating TB which you'll hear about, also in collaboration with Sapkua and also with the Houting Ukozi Regional Tripartite Forum in the spirit of combating TB. Thank you so much to all attendees, both physically and virtually. Remember that we actually need to observe the COVID protocols, meaning that we need to wear our mask at all times. Remember to sanitize our hands and remember to keep our social distancing. I think one thing COVID has actually taught us is to basically enjoy the hygiene skills. And I think I haven't had flu to tell you for, for, for such a long time. If I have flu, I think I'll get very, very sick because I don't understand it anymore because I'm always wearing my mask except for now. Ne? And I think and hope that all of you have been vaccinated. And I know we have vaccinated with the Johnson vaccine, J&J uh, &J vaccine, and also together with the Pfizer vaccine. As we commemorate today, today it is not a workshop. We urge you please not to ask questions, but if you have a burning question to please um, wait for two to three minutes just before we go for tea 
and ask your question or your comment that you actually have for us or for the virtual attendees please you can put your questions forward in the chat box and also in the chat box we'll ask humbly our presenters uh, to respond in the chat box well the purpose of today is to gain great insight in the work the minds have done to combat TB. We have a beautiful range of presenters and we thank those presenters for today as they will grace our stage and give us some information which will plant a seed in our brain as to how are we going to combat this TB, work together with who to end TB by 2030 and come up with innovative structures. Thank you. That is my introduction. For now, I'm going to request Mr. Dixon Muchetti to come through from the lodge and come and give us our safety emergency procedure. The floor is yours. Let's please keep our mask on, sanitize our hands, keep our distance, and always, 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 if you have got a, a flu or if you feel your temperature is going up or you're not feeling all right, we have got a sick bay and a place that we can isolate for you as we, as we seek more medical attention for your own safety and the health of others around us. Uh, for our evacuation route, if something emergency that has happened here or, or there is something that you don't feel it's all right, we've got uh, our exit points, we've got one there with the green emblem on top that shows exit. If you go to our to my left, that is to your right, we have got one assembly point for us, that is by the gate that they, we used to get in, and we have got another assembly point by the main gate just over the reception area, that is to my right. Please, if there's emergency, don't use the exit that I'm facing right there to the back. Let's go not under the roof, but let's go outside where there is no roof above us. So in our restrooms, they are on my left. At the end, there is where the restrooms, the gentlemen and the ladies is all there. There's a sanitizer by the door. If you get there, please make sure you leave it clean and safe for the next person that is coming. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Muchetti. Now, I would like to introduce... Mr. Charles Mukumani. He is an organizational labor representative of the National Unions of Mine Workers and labor convener of the mining industry for TB, HIV, and AIDS, and serves in the advisory committee at the Mine Health and Safety Council. Please come forward, Mr. Charles. Thank you very much. Thank Stay you. Yours. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, ours is to do the less we forget as organized labor. I, uh, my name is Charles Mkumani. I'm representing organized labor in the SAMI and as a convener in Mitak Metal in mine, Mining Industry Advisory Committee at the MHSC. We want to put just two, two points before we uh, do that. First, we want to appeal uh, to the mining industry to continuously look at the conditions, the, the living conditions of uh, our, our members. I think so long as uh, our members' living conditions are not improved, I think uh, TB will always be a problem in the mining sector. We also want to take a challenge uh, that um, has just been raised, that. TB seems to be affecting more men in the sector. So we want to say to this uh, uh, forum, we will take this up to the organized uh, labor caucus and discuss it. We want to, I want to promise you that we want to embark on campaigns regarding that so that uh, we want to get to know what is, why men are not you know, coming forth in terms of you know, doing the screening so we want to appeal to manager, management in, in various minds to assist organized labor in doing so. With that, 
we want to then uh, ask you to raise in honor of those who left us due to COVID, TB, HIV and AIDS in the mining sector. Can you all rise for a moment of silence? Thank you. You may all be seated. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles Mukumani. You know, there's one thing we pointed out, that men are less diagnosed than women. I just believe maybe women, you know, we get used to visiting the doctor because we tend to give birth and then we train, you know, as it is, we need to take care of the family, we need to be healthy. And I don't know whether maybe the doctors are handsome that we visit, so we don't know. <laughs> but it is imperative that each and every individual um, goes and sees the doctor and gets diagnosed for HIV and TB, and as, especially in this day and age. Many years have passed since we had HIV. I mean, I was still a student at Vets University in 1995, where, where we used to wear, I mean, the professors and registers, they used to wear those hazmat suits when they approached an HIV positive individual. And nobody understood exactly what was going on, you know, at that point in time. And even up to today, we're still grappling with it. There are those individuals that today come through to the hospital newly diagnosed with very, very low CD4 counts of below 200 with TB and also with COVID-19. So we need to still pass the message and sing a very strong song on making sure that you get diagnosed for your HIV, making sure that you drink your tablets, they're there. One tablet a day, at least we have also reduced the, the pill burden. So it is very important that we encourage our men Please visit the doctors. Try and find out what is wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with that. It is to assist us, to assist you to live longer. I think that is the message that we need to pass through. Now, I would like to introduce Ms. Florence Mahampa, who is our Occupational Health Program Manager with the Mind Health and Safety Council, MITEC, and Mine Occupational Health Advisory Committee to come through and inform us about the purpose of this event and introducing the theme which will set the stage. Ms. Florence, kindly come through. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, Standing before you as introduced, this is Florence Marampa, and I am the Occupational Health Program Manager at the Mind Health and Safety Council. And basically, my duty on behalf of our chairperson at MIFEC is to just formally introduce the purpose as to why we are all gathered here, and also just let you know what the theme is for this year and why we have basically chosen it. I will not go into detail in terms of the theme because it will be covered at a later stage. So with that being said, colleagues, allow me to then continue. Um, okay, so uh, the presentation I'm going to take you through is very, very short. I'll just do three things, like I said, just the background, the pair post, and then we'll talk to the theme as well as the slogan. So in this year of 2022, colleagues were in the 140 year um, since the discovery of the myobacterium um, tuberculosis, which is known to cause um, tuberculosis and has been responsible for many deaths. Um, in 1882, particularly in Europe um, at that time, as well as in the United States. And we do know that since then, there's been quite a lot of interventions that have been made, um, but we do know also that, you know, there is still quite a lot that still needs to be done in eradicating TB, and hence these commemorations are actually very important. 
With that being said, colleagues, the MHSC has been commemorating this event on an annual basis, except for in 2022, as has been alluded due to the disruptions with COVID-19, but we have readjusted. And I think in the past year, we actually had this fully physical. And in this year, with you know, restrictions being lifted, we then thought, let's rather do it hybrid. Let's learn you know, to crawl before we can actually then fully go um, for this physical event. We can go through. So basically, colleagues, we are gathered here um, in tripartism, but also in partnership. Um, with our strategic partners, as has been mentioned, we have Masoisa Health Program, which have partnered with us in hosting this event. We also have Subcoa, who are the Secretariat for Senec, and they are responsible, as we know, for the national um, TB commemorations that actually happen. And we also have the Gauteng Ukhozi RTF, which we have partnered with. And I really must say that, you know, Ukozi has really come to the party um, and we will see later on even in terms of the minds that have agreed to partner with us in doing awareness campaigns during this month of March. So we are really excited about that and we really just thought, you know what, a lot of work has been done and continues to be done in the big minds and it's really about time that we actually illuminate on the winds of the small scale minds but also that we really just give them that platform to show us how much they have progressed um, in as far as eradicating um, TB. With that being said, colleagues, the other reason we are actually here is really as a sector to reflect on where we are in as far as TB is concerned. And um, at a later stage, Dr. Mkwabato will be giving us the stats, talking to that. And also just to really talk to where we are wanting to go. We have targets that were set in 2014, colleagues. Again, we will talk to that at a bit of a later stage, and then we'll be talking to, you know, where to from here in as far as that is concerned. And we also, um, as has been mentioned, we are wanting to demonstrate the importance of collaboration colleagues. And hence, I've mentioned so many of the partners that we have had, because we do realize that we cannot win this fight of eradicating TB on our own. So collaboration is very important. And today, it's really just also about really emphasizing that. Um, and then further to that, colleagues, we wanted to raise awareness. You know. Commemorations are really a great time wherein we can really just, you know, raise awareness, remind people really of the importance really of fighting TB because it has claimed many lives. And again, at a later stage, you will be told about the stats. We do know that TB is preventable, that it's also curable, but it does continue to actually claim many lives. Um, so really, awareness colleagues, it's very, very important. And you would have seen outside also that there have been awareness packs and we have also been doing um, build up campaigns, not only here in Gauteng, um, but also in other small scale mines across South Africa. And this will be talked to also at a later stage. And not only that, Mr. Sia Jiguana from Subcoa will also talk to our participation as well in the Northern Cape in as far as Senec awareness campaigns are concerned for the national commemoration. Then um, lastly, colleagues, we are really here to really just honor the lives of those people that are fighting this pandemic at this stage, but not only just TB, but also HIV and AIDS, and also those that are really fighting COVID-19, which I really do believe it really affects all of us. And we are also wanting to really just sympathize with those that have lost their loved ones due to TB, as well as HIV and AIDS and COVID-19. So with that being said, colleagues, um, these are the themes um, that have been released from both um, the global level as well as the national level. And you will understand that on an annual basis, the themes that we actually come up with as a sector are always aligned to the two themes. So in terms of the global theme, colleagues, as you can see on the screen, um, it is um, written invest to NTB, save lives. And as far as the national theme is then concerned, um, it's invest in action to NTB now. Get screened and stigma save lives. And in support then of the two themes as well, and looking at where we are as a sector, we then thought our theme then should also incorporate the two. 
and therefore you would have seen when we sent out the save the dates, the invitations, as well as the awareness campaigns throughout the month of March, we have been emphasizing the fact that we need to invest in action to end TB, but not only TB, but also HIV and COVID-19. I think in the past two years, we have been talking a lot about having an integrated response, and that's really the direction that we are going, colleagues, as a sector. So that's the theme, invest in action to end TB, HIV and COVID-19 in SAMI now, save lives. And the slogan to that is called, get screened um, in brackets for TB, get tested for TB, for HIV, for COVID-19, adhere um, to treatment for the three diseases that I've mentioned and also get vaccinated. Like I said, at this stage, I'm not going to break it down. Um, in the later stages, it will be broken down, colleagues. And with that being said, I do hope that we actually enjoyed today's session and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Florence, and thank you very much for the round of applause. How do we do it? We do the one, two, three, like. Can we do it like that? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. So we are investing to NTV, in an action to NTV, and it is a process, and a process requires a collaborative effort, and a process meaning that for many, many years since I started in the mining industry, the Mine Health and Safety Council, the Mineral Council, SAPCOA, everybody has been working together in awareness, procedures, and policies to ensure that we, they, they give guidance to the mines to assist them in awareness and treatment of TB. But, and HIV. But TB is like, I always say TB is a weird disease. You know why? because you have to prevent, ne? prevent, and then you diagnose, and then you treat, and then you still prevent from not having TB again. We always say prevention is better than cure, but TB just takes the whole estate. Instead of HIV, we know you prevent, you prevent, you don't have it, you know? But with TB, the possibility of you having TB, even if, even if you prevent it, it is still actually quite high. So it is important for us to intensify our screening and our awareness campaigns, and show that everybody in the South African mining industry, even nationally, that they're actually screened. Because I have that husband, you know, that wife. I work at the mine, but the husband might work maybe somewhere. I have TB, but I must ensure that the whole family is screened. So that is the important message that we must also pass through. Now, I'm going to introduce Dr. Lindiwe Mvusi. She's going to do a virtual presentation for us. I'm going to request her humbly that while I'm still introducing her, if she could show us maybe her face on the virtual so that we know who we are talking about. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Lindy Wei. And she is the director responsible for drug susceptible TB in the TB control and management cluster within the National Department of Health. As we know, we have to work in collaboration with the Department of Health. She is a medical practitioner with a postgraduate training in occupational and public health and has worked in the private and public sectors to joining the Department of Health in 2001. Her presentation is on national and provincial state of TB and HIV. So let us give her the podium and welcome her on stage. Thank you very much. Dr. Lindue Mvuzi. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for that introduction. And uh, I'm just trying to load my slides so for the delay. Um, just to um, say that uh, to check if um, I'm audible and you can see um, the, the visual, my face. <laughs> Um, 
Colleagues, uh, what I'm going to cover um, today is basically just give a very brief uh, uh, overview in terms of uh, uh, the progress with TB in the country and highlight some of the challenges as well as um, uh, some of the plans going forward. Um, in terms of... Uh, oh no. In terms of uh, the, the, the background to this, can you see my slides now? Not yet. Not yet? Yes. Let me try. them again. Sorry about this. In the meantime, while um, she's still trying to sort out the technical issues, um, South Africa, in actual fact, has been seen as one of the 30 countries with a high TB burden. What do I mean about that? We basically have TB, we have TB and HIV, and we also have MDR. Now, great strides have been done in diagnosing TB on itself, TB and HIV. MDR also, even the treatment of MDR, great strides have been done from reducing the treatment uh, duration of MDR TB from 18 months to nine months. And that is because of the newest modalities of treatment where the Department of Health is basically using bedaquiline, which are the newest agents, and together with linozolate. And that has helped a lot. I mean, um, you could imagine um, how long it will take for an individual not to be at work, 18 months out of work because they are drinking you know, the tablets and that used to affect them financially a lot. Um, Dr. Lindy, where are we getting there? I think I can see progress. Yes, oh, can you see my slide now, sorry? Yes, oh yes, wonderful. Thank you very much, I think you can enlarge the view and then start with us. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, as I indicated earlier, I will just provide the background. Let me go straight. I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing feedback. I'm not sure what's going on from my side. Okay, let me, it says that my slides are not. Um, doctor, what we're going to do is to see whether we cannot assist you with presenting from our side. As we can see, you're struggling, you do uh, have it, you do have it, if you can just enlarge it. They are moving now, right? Yes. I think I'm yes, sorted, the moving. slides are moving now. Yes. You can go into okay. presentation mode. All right, thanks, sir. I can't, I think, I can't hear you that well. Um, but uh, let me get going. Yes, please. So, colleagues, the, the challenges, I mean, the TB burden trends uh, currently in the country are that uh, we do have a decline in the TB incidence. Uh, which is now it is estimated at about 328,000, which shows a 48% a decline overall since 2009. We also have seen um, a, a slight decline in TB mortality, 
um, uh, sorry, not a slight decline in TB mortality, but uh, the decline is 67%. And uh, we're seeing that uh, most people that uh, uh, have been have benefited from this are the people living with HIV, uh, where we saw a large decline in, in people living with HIV and a slight decline in those that uh, are uh, HIV negative or do not know their status. And in most cases, uh, the gains that have been achieved currently are mainly due to the scale up of, of the ART program, including prevention of TB in that group. When it comes to outcomes, um, we haven't really uh, done well. This uh, graph here just basically shows the, the, the districts based on the performance. So as you can see, we have those that have done well when it comes to uh, treatment success and those that have not done so well. The same would apply to uh, loss to follow up, which is the orange line and uh, the small pink uh, bars, sorry, be, uh, orange bars and pink bars. The small pink bars are mainly a uh, failure, which remains persistently low. And the blue bars then are the diet, light blue are bar, uh, diet, and then the darker blue are not evaluated. So when you look at uh, the losses uh, during treatment, uh, this is now standing at 9.9 percent and um, only five districts have actually uh, attained a target of less than five percent. When it comes to treatment success, I forgot to mention it's about d three districts that have attained the target of 90 percent. And then TB deaths remain high uh, at 5.2 percent and only two dis two provinces uh, have attained a target of less than Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. okay, I forgot. That? <laughs> That's better. Thank you. And um, sorry, I forgot to do that. And um, the treatment failure remains low at 0.4% and patients not evaluated um, at 4% as well. Uh, now, this highlights mainly the some of the challenges that I will talk to later on. Uh, but before I get to those, I want to remind uh, colleagues in terms of the TB care cascade that we have. This is a national cascade and we've tried to um, also develop not a cascade as such, but targets along the cascade. Now, when you look at the cascade, we have the TB incidence, and I must indicate that this was for 2018. The incidence was then estimated at 390,000, and as you noticed, it's, it's actually come down from 390. This was based on the revisions we made uh, after we had the national TB prevalence results. Uh, when you look at the next buy is mainly TB, who, um, TB testing and those that were diagnosed, notified, and then uh, successfully treated. The last bar were not necessarily um, following up currently based on our guidelines, but it's looking at uh, uh, the status of the patients at, uh, after 12 months of completing treatment. Now, the, as you can see, there are leakages along the bar and the, the care cascade uh, from the, uh, reaching everyone who has to be with testing services, screening and testing services. And again, uh, we diagnose patients, but we still don't start all of them on, on, on treatment. And uh, even those that are started on treatment, only a few actually complete treatment. Uh, we also had COVID from 2020, which uh, actually negatively impacted on, on uh, the program. Uh, looking at the drug susceptible TB notification trends here, we're comparing the 2019, where we were in 2019, with um, the 2020, which is the middle bar, and then 2021. 
sorry, 2021 is the middle bar and 2020 is this one. So as you can see, round about um, March, this was uh, almost a week after the declaration of the lockdown. There was a sharp reduction in terms of um, the notifications and there were a number of reasons for this. But uh, around uh, September, when we moved from level of, uh, when we moved to level two, there was an increase in terms of numbers that were seen. And a similar pattern for DR notifications was also observed, but here it's just comparing um, the 2019 to the 2020. And as you can see, there's huge losses um, in terms of uh, notifications for that group as well. Now, we then had to develop a TB catch-up or recovery plan, which we have just revised recently, implementation in the new financial year, which starts from tomorrow. And this uh, recovery plan actually covers uh, a number of uh, key objectives or areas that we need to uh, strengthen. One being we still need to focus on people in the communities who have TB and link them to treatment, trace all those who were lost to follow up. This is either during uh, the lockdown or post, um, at least uh, in the new uh, the last quarter of the old financial year, and also strengthen the systems for linkage and retention in care, monitoring and evaluation uh, systems, infection control, and uh, the intensify the communication and social mobilization aspects. Lastly, to engage all sectors in the TB response. Now, just looking at uh, uh, coming back to the cascade and what the intervention under each of the areas or the pillars of the cascade, uh, under the first 90, that's where we need to reach people undi with undiagnosed TB and then test them as well. So this, um, um, there are a number of uh, suggested activities here. First of all, to conduct uh, hotspot campaigns, which will be informed by a geomapping of um, uh, areas with a high burden of TB, and then conduct contact screening for all household contacts of people diagnosed with TB, and also screen key populations that are at risk who may not be presenting to facilities uh, and uh, use digital x-rays for, for screening. We know that uh, the symptom screening tool has its own uh, limitations and that it's not that sensitive to pick up most people uh, who have TB. Uh, we also have uh, a TB health check uh, platform where people can then screen themselves and if they have uh, symptoms, then they can present to facilities. This uh, platform it can be downloaded onto, um, uh, uh, what is this now, um, smartphones uh, as a WhatsApp, uh, or it can then, uh, it also uses SMSs. We lastly, um, also, the next part is around testing. Here, we're looking at mainly testing certain high-risk groups, irrespective of symptoms. And these would be people living with HIV, uh, previously treated people as TB patients, and then household contacts again. And also introducing and scaling up uh, new diagnostics. We've had the Expect Ultra for quite some time now and which is more sensitive than the previous uh, cartridge that we're using. Uh, but here we're also explore, exploring reaching children, uh, especially uh, because we have um, difficulties in obtaining a sputum in children, so we're exploring the use of stool uh, in GXP testing. Uh, we've introduced the urine lamb, which is specifically for PLHIV, and uh, XDR cartridge, which we, uh, we which we are planning to actually introduce this new in the new financial year. Now, with in linking people now with a positive result to treatment, 
We are looking at uh, uh, communicating results uh, directly to patients using SMS system, strengthening the referrals. We are currently sending out uh, weekly and monthly uh, alerts from the gene expert test for both the uh, rifampicin sensitive and resistant TB. So we'll strengthen the use of those alerts that are being sent, sent out. And for MDRTB to decentralize the care, as you know, uh, it's more centralized. We are in the process of ensuring that each district does, sub-district, sorry, does have a, a, a treatment site for MDR. And, and uh, Dr. On uh, retention, Dr. we're looking at digital health solutions to actually uh, promote adherence, uh, sort of supporting them remotely. And uh, we're going to also intensify or strengthen the use of the existing adherence counseling package, uh, introduce new arrangements. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is Dr. Mampa speaking? Yes, I can hear you. Um, yes. We are now giving you an extra five minutes to complete. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. All right. No, that's fine. The rest uh, will be short. And then again, I think lastly, including um, TB in work, workplace policies. The prevention strategies uh, uh, have been referred to, but in congregate settings, we strengthen infection control, use of chi, um, cough hygiene or promotion of cough hygiene, scale up uh, treatment for latent TB infection, and even increase uh, coverage for BCG. And obviously, um, the all these will be um, supported or strengthened by having a robust m &E system, uh, strengthening ACSM activities, capacity building, quality assurance. Uh, Cross-cutting issues around m and &E, as I mentioned, uh, uh, communication and strengthening the governance of the TB program. Now, the priority interventions, um, I think here I'll cover those that I haven't mentioned. One was uh, looking at integrating uh, screening and testing for TB and COVID, and um, also strengthening the uh, notification system and uh, community outreach services. Um, for treatment, we introducing the shorter regimens, 3HP and 3RH for children and uh, uh, expanding the use of uh, TPT to all household contents. There are critical enablers that we have outlined in this plan, uh, having the guidelines and also peace, uh, improving uh, the data systems, and here we're aiming at improving the quality of data, uh, develop, a, uh, develop a public-facing dashboard, and uh, improve the quality of services, as I said, and engaging partners, civil society and business. Now, in conclusion, uh, COVID has uh, reversed the gains that we have made until 2019. And uh, the number of uh, people that un with undiagnosed TB is standing at 154,000. And uh, they, we've also noticed that the notification prevalence gap is highest in men young people between 15 and 24, and in older people more than 65 years. So our interventions will be targeting at finding these people. And again, children have been a neglected group, so there'll be more focus on children. And um, the other uh, challenges that we face are related to implementation of TB prevention strategies, uh, the suboptimal communication, and a weak TB surveillance. So that, in a nutshell, would be the focus uh, as, as a... Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you very as, much. At least for the one year of this. Thank you so, very much. <laughs> Thank you very so, much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, one important fact is that the slides are going to be shared, so we'll have the opportunity to peruse them at our own leisure. That is very important. And what um, Dr. Lindwe and Vuzi pointed to um, as a nutshell, which is very, very important, is how COVID affected our intensive screening and contact tracing on TB. I actually have one success story that I want to inform you about. It's about one of my colleagues, um, 
diagnosed with COVID, treated them very, very well, nicely. They left the hospital. They continued to work, but however, they came to work limping, and they were limping for quite some time, and I didn't understand the limping and the COVID. So I sort of watched him for three weeks, and then after three weeks, I told him, come here. I need to understand why you're limping. I thought it was gout. I did an x-ray, and I could see that the bones in his left foot were moth-eaten. Now, that didn't make any sense, because that colleague of mine also has HIV. They went for a biopsy, and they found TB in the foot. Now, TB in the foot, the last time I heard about it was in the, like, the 20th centuries there. And I mean, it's HIV positive, I would expect it to be in the lungs or all over the body, but I found it in the foot. But no, it was not not even TB in the foot, it was MDR of the food. So it threw me completely off. So what does this mean? It means we must have integrated programs of HIV and TB and COVID together. Because the minute an individual has COVID, it means you still have to exclude TB. The minute they have HIV, TB, and COVID, you still have to exclude TB. With every test that you do, you have to exclude TB and ensure that that individual gets the correct treatment. One of the things that she also talked about is the loss to follow up, case finding, contact tracing. We in the South African mining industry, we are so fortunate to have the Masoiso Health Program. You know when we started the contact tracing with the Masoiso Health Program, it was like, hey, they are now infiltrating our space. We didn't know why they were there in the very first place. But it taught us a lot of things. It taught us to do case finding. It taught us to look at our outcomes to ensure that the people have actually received that treatment. We even went further to look at the children to find out whether did they actually receive INH prophylaxis. We went even further to ensure that the children, if they were diagnosed with TB, were they actually treated. We went to the local state clinics and ensured that they completed treatment to tie up the whole loose end. So it is our responsibility, together as a collaborative effort with the Department of Health to work together against combating um, TB and ensuring that COVID-19, and I think we are all like happy right now, it's actually been quite nice and, and quiet with COVID, and we pray that the next coming June month is gonna be very quiet, and we, we pray now we will just sort of like continue to intensify our efforts, and, but we must ensure that we combine the three together. Now I'm going to introduce Ms. Ipile Mohorosi, she is an occupational inspector at the Houghton Regional Department of Mining and Minerals and Mining. She is appointed as an alternative member of the Mine Health and Safety Council Culture Transformation Advisory Committee. Her presentation is going to be on the regional stats on TB, HIV, and AIDS, and COVID-19. Welcome, thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Balfour. So you can see the slides as well, man. Yes, very well. Okay, then 
layout of my presentation, um, we are basically going to be uh, dealing with the background, HIV AIDS state, status in COVID-19, and PTV status and the challenges that we are facing as a region in conclusion. The background. All the information that is contained within this presentation is the information that the region got from the DMRE form that is called form DMRE 164. And the form normally gets to the office from early January up until uh, end of February. And um, this is a statutory reporting. So each and every employer is uh, uh, compelled to actually submit the form. Um, the period, as I have alluded, is from uh, uh, last year, 2021, from January till December. And um, the information, this, the importance of the information is that the region is trying uh, to be informed of what is happening around the region in terms of COVID, HIV, and PTV. And this is going to inform us in, going, uh, in, in the future so that we can actually change or formulate guidelines in order to assist the industry. Thank you. In terms of COVID-19, I have taken the whole states of the region, like your uh, um, bigger mine and the smaller mine. So I've tried to divide the smaller mine like you uh, saw there. Um, cumulative positive cases thus far for small mines, the small mine has contributed 187. And in terms of recovery, um, 179 thus far. And death, uh, only two is from the small mine. And the test conducted that was initiated by each and every operation is uh, 475. Those are the states in terms of the HIV. And this, as I've alluded earlier, is from the form that we call 164, the MRE 164. When you look at the testing for HIV thus far, uh, total testing, uh, it contributed 391, and then the positive cases is 63 and newly diagnosed for 2021 is 34. Um, and then with PTV suspected, people that went through and did the screening, but um, when it came to the, um, when they were tested for the actual PTV, like, uh, maybe with the x-rays, it shows that they suspected TB, but when they do the actual test for TP, uh, PTB, it did not confirm TB. That's why I'm saying suspected PTB. It's actually, for suspected, it's 19, and then confirmed PTB for small mines, it's one, and MDR is one. Um, the challenges that we are facing as a region is that we are still having problems with the employer giving us late reporting. That is the biggest challenge because as we are sitting now, other employers are still bringing in the forms. And there is delay because Dr. Mkoboto's office needs to collaborate and make a conclusive uh, report that is given through to parliament. Some of the employees still using outdated form and when you look at the outdated form, you see that it does not cover the changes that were made with the years with new development. And that is frustrating actually to the data capturer and also us as occupational medicine inspectors. Employers, some of the employers are just submitting for the sake of submitting. When you look at the actual form, you'll see that they did nothing in terms of HIR, BCT, in terms of awareness, nothing. So you are asking yourself, are they not interested in seeing what is happening within their operation at large? So that's the thing. And
and um, when you look at the form, uh, the information that I've given, it looks as if PTB does not pose a problem, but that stands to be something that we need to discuss because based on the suspected cases that I've alluded to, 19, where did that fall to? And we should remember with the small mines, all the employees are, are not obliged actually to disclose with regards to PTB or HIV. So it becomes difficult if nobody is coming forward or volunteering information. So the OMP will only know what they know and that is it. Um, so I'm posing this question to all of us. How much effort are needed in order to assist the industry so that we, all of us, can know our employee holistically? I'm just thinking, so you see, maybe that's the start. We'll see how it goes next year. I agree with you. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, that is just a link to show what are we faced with as a region, if it can open. Okay, but basically the, I was just trying to show the audience that um, the forms zero zero, and those are the things that we are expecting the OMP to do when they do medical, when the employees are conducting medical surveillance, like your uh, PTB screening test. That is a given. It's actually a question for one of the um, tests that has been conducted during medical surveillance. When you do the, uh, when you check for the patient's lungs through the, the test that we call uh, wet, uh, the VUTA. I don't, uh, the most of the employee call it the VUTA, that's it. So that is the thing. That is compulsory, so you're asking yourself, is the OMP not doing it or during the time of the filling of the uh, form? He did not, or she did not consider it. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Leng. Thank you very much, Ms. Mohorosi. And I think it is a challenge. We rely on the information that is basically provided to us to assess the trends, to know which lines we actually have to reach out to, to go and assist, especially with screening of individuals the information that we receive from oh. the DMR once so flexible the information that we receive gives us a lot of insight as to which OMPs, occupational medical practitioners, we need to assist. So we urge you to please assist us with that information. It's very, very important, including the presumptive cases. I know it is very difficult to look at the stats for the presumptive cases. I used to do it a lot. But Ms. Ibeling, thank you very much for this wonderful uh, presentation. And I think that going forward, more workshops should be done to educate the, uh, the occupational medical practitioners on filling of the forms and the importance of those forms that information that is required. I'm going to introduce somebody that I've known for quite some time, <laughs> Dr. Dipaliza Mokoboto. She's going to present to us virtually. So um, if you can hear me, can you please um, show us your face so that we can see whom we are speaking to. But she is a medical inspector at the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy after having worked as an occupational medical practitioner in the mining industry. She's also a state convener of METEC and a member of MOHEC within the Mine Health and Safety Council. She's currently the president of Mine Medical, Associ uh, Mine medical Professional Association, which is MMPA, and her presentation is going to be on the South African mining industry update on TB, HIV, and AIDS. 
Well, there she is, the beautiful lady. Thank you very much. Can you hear us? You seem to have a little bit of static on your side. Can you hear us very well? You can unmute yourself. Yes, I can. Ooh, lovely. The podium is yours. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for that introduction. I will switch off the video and then uh, try to load my presentation. If you could kindly indicate um, if it's on and I'll put it on slide mode. Yes, it is on. Can you please put it on slide mode? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, at good morning once again, uh, everyone uh, who's attending. It looks like um, uh, it's a pity one could not be there physically. Um, and I have been experiencing a bit of problems this side. Um, seeing other people's slides but at any rate um at least the program director is there so i don't have to really follow much today i'm talking to tb and hiv states in the south african mining industry as alluded to before uh, as and as collected from the dmr e164 forms that uh, miss ipiling was talking about this is my presentation outline, a brief introduction with background and looking at the milestones, the submission trends, the compliance per commodity, the TV trends over the past six years, um, showing you the national picture. Ipiling has covered the provincial picture. I'll give the national picture. TV screening trends nationally and the incidence uh, trends and uh, also cover HIV trends as well and conclude. As a way of introduction, uh, and I think the program director has done a good job uh, about that, and we all know that TB remains the leading cause of death among HIV-infected individuals in South Africa, and it is actually driving the TB epidemic in South Africa. And the co-infection rate was reportedly at 59% in 2019 in South Africa. And it is clear that we need to have a coordinated and integrated response to win the war against the dual epidemics of TB and HIV. Global TB statistics show that COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in a big reduction in newly diagnosed TB cases and that we've already had. And uh, the latest TB incidence uh, rate in South Africa, according to WHO, is estimated at 615 per 100,000. And in South Africa, we're still uh, gearing up to reaching the 1990s targets. And I think Dr. Mfusi uh, covered uh, that. As a way of background, uh, in terms of where we're coming from as MIFEC, to be, you know, connected with this TB and HIV. We all know that in the early 2010, um, status of TB and HIV was not known. Although the mining industry was collecting data on TB and HIV in their workplaces, but it was not something that was, uh, they were doing it individually and it was not reported. And then in um, the, uh, the NIOH was commissioned to at least get a prevalence of TB and HIV in the industry as a starting point. And from that uh, survey that the NIOH did, um, there were recommendations that were made such that uh, one of them indicated that uh, the mining industry had to start reporting on TB and HIV to the department so that we can know the status of TB and HIV and take further action where required in terms of policy, etc. And from that, uh, we had a summit where uh, commitments were made and these commitments were emanating from 
the the commit uh, uh, the recommendations that were made one of them being that um as i've mentioned but then the, the, we needed a tool for the industry to start reporting on um tb and hiv and that is when the dmr 164 reporting form was developed and of course there had to be a committee that looks after tb and hiv and advise on that and that is when Mythic was established in 2012. And once the form was completed, it had to be uh, sent out there to the industry for them to start reporting. And um, they, an instruction was sent out by the chief inspector of mines so that mines can start reporting. And from then to date, mine started reporting on that form. And we have reviewed to accommodate the 1990 NTB strategy, where we have also included explanatory notes uh, for the mining industry to assist in uh, completing these forms. And mines have continued to report on the form. Now, in 2014, we had uh, TB milestones covering TB and HIV, which indicated that um, by 2024, the TB incidence rate should be at or below the national TB incident rate. And at that time, um, uh, the national TB incidence rate was around 850 per 100,000. And um, that for the industry was above 1,000. So we're trying to get below that or you know to match that up or get below that and you'll see with uh, oncoming uh, slides that we have done quite well and in terms of tb on uh, hiv we had set the bar a bit higher although there is a 1990 strategy we had said that at 100 percent of employees should be offered hiv counseling and testing annually with all eligible employees linked to an antiretroviral viral therapy program. Now, these are the submission trends since inception of um, the, the, the DMR-164 reporting form. You can see uh, we started only with 457 mines reporting and gradually with, as time went on and um, with workshopping on the form, more mines that were reporting and by 2020 we had about 775 mines reporting now the form also looks at issues of compliance per commodity or per mine for for that matter but we break it down into commodities and we look at measures such as an integrated tb and hiv policy uh, integrated HIV and TB program and the budget and the monitoring and evaluation. So in terms of dividing it, it into um, um, commodities, we'll note that, um, let me just start with the, the, the totals. You will note that uh, in terms of policies uh, in, in all nationally, at least 91% or 92% of mines are complying in terms of having an integrated policy. And then um, what of worry is that the, the budget for, for TB and HIV programs is quite low at 46.7%. And you will see uh, with the different uh, commodities how they are doing there. I will not go individually into that. Now, looking at the trends of TB data elements, starting from inception up to, actually up to 2020, with focus points being on screening for TB diagnosis and uh, TB treatment, we'll note that uh, the screening has improved from 72.9% to 93.3 percent which at one time was quite high at a uh, 97 percent 
but obviously the uh, you know the effects of covid have had a knockdown effect on the screening because uh, medical surveillance was also affected mm-hmm. in terms of diagnosing for tb at first um, when we started 1.2 percent of the employees were diagnosed with tb and with programs being put in place to improve on the management of TB. One can see that uh, TB, uh, people diagnosed with TB, uh, the the percentage went down to ultimately 0.3%. And in 2020, it was at zero point, a slight increase at 0.4%. And at least uh, about more than 90% of the people who are diagnosed are put on TB treatment. Now, uh, looking at the overall picture of TB programs <clears throat> in the mining industry, where the total sample size uh, for the whole mining industry for 2020 was at 482,000. And from that sample size, I've already mentioned the screening was at 93.3%. And those diagnosed at 0.4%, and those on treatment at 97%. The core infection rate was at 40.5%. Looking at the trends for TB screening, it also seen um, we were aiming for 90% TB screening at least, in line with the 1990 uh, uh, strategy. And we're falling short from the beginning at 80, but with time we went on and even uh, surpassed the 90%. And we are still surpassing the 90% uh, despite the disturbance by COVID. Dr. Mokoboto. Looking at the TB incidents um, and the trends thereof, Dr. as indicated, um, we are sorry? now giving you five minutes to wrap up quickly. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be wrapping up. TB incidence, as you can see, has gone down gradually. And uh, at the last uh, data that received has indicated that we are now at 312 per 100,000 uh, population. Now, these are the trends I'll focus only on uh, for the HIV data elements. I think let uh, the other slides that are coming will talk more to this because this is a bit busy. Now, this is the overall HIV program in all mines with the same uh, sample of people. The cancelled um, people overall 73.5% and those that tested 59% and the percentage of uh, positive people at 5%. And the trends thereof shows that the cancelling has gone up gradually from 54% to where we are now at 73.5%. And the positive rates, we've moved down to 9-10% to where we are at 5.1%. Uh, meaning that um, not many people are hopefully getting positive. In a way of conclusion, I would like to say that Mithak has been supporting the TB and HIV response in the South African mining industry by monitoring TB screening, HIV counseling and testing of mine workers through the DMR-164 form, promoting INH prophylaxis for all HIV positive population and X minus with silicosis, getting guidelines on HIV management, addressing screening TB patients for HIV, guidelines on TB management, developing integrated policies, partaking in all these commemorations for the World AIDS Day and the TB Day, and also keeping abreast with the WHO and Department of Health initiatives having milestones for the industry towards achieving certain goals and collaborating with relevant stakeholders, supporting the initiatives to promote TB and HIV prevention. 
It is said that none of us is as smart as all of us, and that's Ken Blanchard who said that. So it's clear that through partnership, we can achieve a lot. Thank you. That, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you, and that's all I had for you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Dibalisa. That was a riveting presentation, and it all goes back to show us, again, about the importance of our information systems. Now, without much ado, because we are running 20 minutes late, um, I would like to introduce Dr. Tutula Balfo. And Dr. Tutula Balfo will be presenting to us virtually, if you could just maybe show your face so that we can all see you. She is Head of Health at the Mineral Council of South Africa and an employer convener at the Mine Health and Safety Council Board who has served at the Mine Health and Safety Council health advisory committees and various other entities, including SANEX, private sector forum. Her presentation will be on the South African mining update on COVID-19. So are we there, Dr. Titila? Oh, there you are, wonderful. Welcome, welcome very much. Uh, let us let you give the opportunity to grace you with your presentation. Thank you very much, <laughs> grace us actually. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. A uh, very good morning to our Chief Inspector of Mines, to all the principals from organized labor, employers, and the state, and those from our partners, and uh, everyone in the room. It's a pity one is not in Kalinan. I would like to uh, indicate that I'm actually presenting on behalf of Dr. Baloy, um, who unfortunately could not be with us. And it's a real pity because he has put together an excellent presentation for you. And uh, I'm sure you would have loved to present it himself. But let me go off camera. Uh, I hope you can see the presentation. Yes, we can see it. Thank you very much. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we can see it. Thank you very much. You can proceed. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Baloy was uh, um, tasked to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the TB burden. And... Um, Okay, I was just struggling with uh, moving it along. Uh, just to highlight, you know, globally what is happening, uh, as we have had, COVID-19 has had a very negative impact on all health services due to the lockdowns that countries needed to implement. We saw that in Dr. Mvusi's uh, presentation. Um, we uh, had the number of people that were newly diagnosed, and I think that's the most critical thing, that people did not have access to services. And therefore, there was a drop of about 20% in the number of people that were diagnosed with TB from 2019 to 2020. And uh, of those that uh, the 1.3 million decline, it was in 16 countries that uh, are mainly in Asia, but uh, actually these countries are also part of uh, the group of countries that have uh, the highest number of uh, TB cases and South Africa is included. And so I'm sure it's more a number of, a question of the numbers. India has a billion people, uh, Indonesia about uh, 300 million, but uh, we heard that even in South Africa, there was a decline. So as much as there was a decline in the number of people that were diagnosed, there was an increase in the number of deaths from TB from, uh, uh, from a, of about 10%, uh, which actually showed a regression in performance on TB, uh, which took us to 2019. So it's just illustrating that there was a major impact from COVID-19 on TB. Why TB? Well, 
TB Day. Uh, as we all know, this is a day when Dr. Robert Koch discovered uh, the mycobacterium TB. And uh, we also always need to remember that TB used to kill one in every seven people in the United States and Europe. And in fact, TB is fairly new to South Africa, where it was introduced by mainly Europeans trying to uh, recover in the sunny, uh, uh, you know, Cape, uh, uh, Cape province in South Africa. And that, that's how it was first introduced. This was beyond the mining, uh, the Cornwall miners who introduced it directly to the mines. But uh, one is just trying to illustrate the fact that TB was there in other countries and it was eliminated, almost eliminated. And so that should be something that we must also aim to aim for. And if you look at TB in South Africa, it is mainly a disease of people of so low socioeconomic status besides the HIV, if I can take that out. So TB is a disease of poverty and it's therefore still possible for us to eliminate uh, TB if we address those um, you know, the, the causes of TB. These are quotations from the WHO Global TB Report for 2021. And uh, it notes that progress against TB has long been inadequate to reach the target of elimination by 2030. And South Africa is one of those countries, you know, where our progress has not been adequate. But uh, before the COVID pandemic, we were making some progress in diagnosing and treating people and in deaths. And therefore, you know, the COVID pandemic reversed what was a slow progress towards reaching our targets. But I think we must also take away the fact that we had not, it was the response thus far had not been adequate. And therefore, we really need to have a kick, uh, you know, a uh, 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 kick, kick start and up, up skill. Or, 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 or sort of raise our response to the TB pandemic. These are the remarks from the WHO Director General, uh, where I think the most important was that it's also the struggle to end poverty, inequity, unsafe housing, discrimination and, and stigma, and to extend social protection and universal health coverage. This is what he was saying when he was saying that this is the struggle to end TB. So if we look at all of these things, then we will be closer to eliminating TB. These are just some of the performance uh, milestones for the world regarding the, at the top, world and, and TB strategy. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the target, the target is the whole circle and the red is how far we are. So, for instance, on our target on the reducing the TB incidence rate, we wanted to achieve 20%. We have only achieved 11%. This is from 2015 to 2020. And on the number of deaths, we wanted to reduce by 35%. We only achieved 9.2%. That's a huge difference in what we aim to do. And the percentage of people facing catastrophic costs from TB, we wanted that no person must face any catastrophic costs from TB. And we only managed that for 47% of people. So just illustrating that, there is still a huge gap for us to fill if we are to achieve our targets. The other uh, at the bottom is the UN high level meeting on TB treatment targets. And again, you can see there, the best that we do is about half, which is the people who are on TB treatment. Uh, and on the others, we are far less than half. And on MDR TB for children, we are a, whole, a woeful 11% in terms of the targets that we were to uh, achieve. On the UN high level meeting uh, targets of TB prevention uh, treatment targets, the only one where we did well was people living with HIV, where we, were, we had a target of 6 million people to treat and we treated 7.2 million. On the rest, again, we are falling far short. And the same with uh, funding targets, and maybe for this meeting, which is on investing in TB, this is the important slide right at the bottom on the right, where we had a target of 13 billion annually 
to invest, but we only managed to invest 5.3 billion, less than half of what we intended. And again, on TB research, it was 2 billion, but we achieved about 900 million. So all in all, we are not achieving what we had set out to do. I will not uh, take time on this slide just to point out this is the statistics for it's, uh, uh, these are the statistics for the South African mining industry regarding COVID-19. And uh, we from the beginning of the epidemic, we recorded 63,707 cases with unfortunately 749 deaths. This uh, is usually available and circulated fairly widely and is also available on our website, which is why I will not spend too much time on it. On the vaccination, just to say that we are now on 75% of our employees having had at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, that takes us to 67% who are fully vaccinated. And uh, maybe one needs to uh, uh, commend that the companies for doing what was probably not an easy job um, although this is still short of the target but at least it is uh, quite close to what uh, we wanted in closing okay. uh, is to say that the COVID-19 pandemic has reversed years of progress you know in providing essential TB services and reducing the TB burden and negative, negative. We now need to get back on track uh, if we are to achieve our uh, uh, targets of eliminating TB. It is also sobering to reflect that during the 18 months that we've had the COVID-19 pandemic and we're all focused on the pandemic, we in that time lost about 88,754 people to, to COVID. But at the same time, there were about 90,500 South Africans who died from TB. So we should not, uh, uh, you know, risk focusing on COVID-19 at the expense of TB. And now that COVID-19 really is, um, if I can put it uh, like that, on the way out, it's no longer as devastating as it, it used to be. I think we need to make sure that we focus on that we have always uh, had as a problem, which is TB. So COVID-19 pandemic has proved that health systems can make drastic changes when the need arises, and it is the same that we need to do for uh, for TB. So the resources that we, you know, marshaled for TB, for, uh, for COVID-19, we need to make sure that we do the same for TB. I will end with a quotation from Dr. Therese, Teresa Kaseva, Kasava, who is the director of the WHO Global TB Program. And she says, we have before us the opportunity to save the millions of lives, to preserve resources, and to demonstrate the success of efforts to end TB, despite crises that come our way. We must keep the momentum going to stop the spread of this preventable and curable disease and reach those affected with the care they need. And she concludes by saying we are running out of time. The clock is ticking. It's time for urgent action to end TB. So on that note, uh, colleagues, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Baloy for his presentation. And it's been my pleasure to share it with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chichula Balfour. Thanks a lot. Um, there is only one point that I also want to remind us on, which are the sustainable development goals of TB, and which one of them is featuring on point three is diabetes. We tend to forget that diabetes in itself reduces, reduces an individual's immunity, and those people are actually prone to TB. We also need to intensify our alcohol and drug awareness amongst the people to ensure that they have proper nutrition, they go for counseling, and that they are not prone to TB. As Dr. Tutula has alluded, also poverty plays a huge role. So we actually have a lot of work to do on our side. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our tea break, and it's going to be a 15-minute tea break from 11 o'clock until quarter past 11, 
For those who have checked in, we request you please to check out. And then we'll meet at exactly quarter past 11. And for our virtual um, attendees, uh, 15 minutes. I hope you'll grab a cup of coffee and enjoy it in the meantime. Thank you very much.
actually very, very important, not just for MHSC as an entity, mm -hmm. but for the entire SA mining industry as a whole. We know how significant mining contributes to the economy. So as long as our workforce is safe and we continue promoting awareness, uh, focusing on TB today, we want to ensure that mining continues to contribute to the SA economy. So it is very, very important in continuing the fight against, H uh, against TB and HIV. Um, the theme uh, this year talks to ending TB in the South African mining industry. Yeah. And what initiatives do you think um, travel tax stakeholders can play towards um, ensuring the end of TB in the industry? Okay, thanks, Masana. Very good question. So in line with our mandate, MHSC needs to review legislation and develop any policies or regulations that can assist the sector. In addition to that, we need to conduct research mm -hmm. and also promote a culture of health and safety. Mm -hmm. So our initiatives are based directly on that mandate. Mm -hmm. Today is a good example of us yeah. promoting a culture of health and safety, mm -hmm. making sure that we reach as many stakeholders as, as possible mm -hmm. uh, in ensuring that our initiatives are known and we have buy-in. Going forward, we'll continue with conducting you know, cutting-edge research that will contribute to the sector and also develop legislation and regulations and policies that will assist the sector. Last yeah. question for you before I let you go. Okay. Um, are you able to just give me um, the research that the Mind Health and Safety Council has conducted specifically looking into or zooming onto TV? Okay, no good. to share with us? Yeah, yeah. I, I will share. Yeah, I will okay. share just the very, very latest colleagues. Uh, we, we can't run away from the fact we are still in the COVID pandemic. Things mm -hmm. have improved. But a very important uh, research question was, you know, what is the impact on, on TB uh, resulting from COVID-19? Mm -hmm. so, so we are very excited about that project. We are busy finalizing a scope mm -hmm. now and in terms of reference for us to mm -hmm. conduct this research. Within the next month, we want to get going uh, so that, you know, as we um, fight TB, we also consider the impact of COVID-19. I think that will really assist us mm -hmm. in continuing our journey and our milestones, you know, from the summits and in assisting the sector. Great. So we're looking forward to that, yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Ngobe. Thank right. you for your no. time. Thanks, thanks, Masanda. Thank thanks. You. Good question. And now thanks. we're going to call Mr. Charles Mkumane. As you may know, the Mind Health and Safety Council is a tra has a tripartite tra tra structure which involves um, organized labor, state, and employers. And now we have Mr. Charles um, Kumane, but I would like for him to introduce himself more, much better than I am doing. Uh, sir, please introduce yourself. My name is Charles Mkumane. I represent organized labor, which includes uh, AMCU, NUM, Solidarity, UASA, and I am the convener in the community that deals with TB and HIV in the mining industry. Um, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Mkumane, please tell us in your view, uh, how, is, how important is this day in the mining industry? I think it is important because we need to look back at uh, how far we've gone, going forward, what are the challenges, mm -hmm. how, how, what are the gaps, and then we deal with those things. And then I think um, when stakeholders meet together, we are able to you know, help each other uh, chart the way forward. I think uh, in that regard, this is very uh, excellent forum because we, we want to uh, you know, say that TB is the number one enemy. Mm -hmm. So this is very important, this, this forum. And uh, thank you so much for that. And what role do you think organized labor can play in ensuring that we end TB in the sun? What, we, what activities, initiatives do you think we could put in place to end um, TB in the sun? I think, I think uh, for us as organized labor, we need to push more in terms of um, you know, making companies to commit themselves in terms of dealing with the, you know, the, 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 the TB in the mining industry. And other areas of uh, the companies must also you know, uh, continue to, to deal with issues of poverty, I mean, um, living conditions of mine workers. Mm -hmm. Because you realize that uh, mine workers have now moved into informal settlement. Uh, since the mines, we, we engaged with mines to, uh, to allow mine workers to live in the compounds and uh, uh, outside the compound. So we need to engage forward uh, the companies to improve conditions of, mine, uh, conditions of living. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Mkumano. I appreciate your time. And um, we will engage later on other matters that you have raised, but thank you so much you. for joining us. And now... I have uh, Mr. Nicole. 
Yes, and I think, you know, I think it's best that I do. The person does the int introduction himself. Uh, please tell us who you are, sir. Well, Sandra, thank you. I'm Nico van Rooyen. I'm working full-time for the union of ASA. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, assist on the council uh, meetings as HRAC, which is not existing anymore. And I was at SIMRAC and MRAC. Great. Uh, so. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining us today. Um, most important uh, for me is uh, you've seen how we have proceeded uh, since the morning up until now uh, with uh, today's program. And what stands out for you about today so far? Masanda, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite uh, not very happy regarding the, the attendance. I think we mm -hmm. could have supported this, the, the, the attendance more. Mm -hmm. And because this is for our employees, of our members and the employees. So sure. I think uh, we should put a better effort in mm -hmm. from, not from our side, from the outside companies mm -hmm. to, to assist us in, in achieving our goals. Our goals, great. And uh, what role do you think, uh, given where you're coming from in terms of your background, what role do you think organized labor can play in ending uh, TB in the South African mining industry? Sandra, from my side, I think if we can get our members to, to be tested mm -hmm. and to declare their, their status and live with their status, and they should know that, that TB is curable if they use the, um, the medicine, I think then we would have achieved a lot. Okay, and uh, what do you think, what, what future initiative do you think we could actually be tapping into um, uh, as the industry as a whole, collectively? Because remember, we are, we are a, a tripartite uh, structure. Yeah. What can we collectively do as the industry in, in, in terms of ending TB? Wanda, if I look at what we did in, in the covert, uh, I think we can tap into the covert system mm -hmm. because I've, we, we, in the mining industry, you should know, we, we achieved a lot and we are uh, in most places at 90% at vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So I think we must use and must use that system mm -hmm. to, suit us, to suit us as well in the, in the TB campaign. Nico, thank you so much for your time and thanks for joining us today at this event. Thanks, Emilio. Thank, thank you so much. And now we have Leticia. Yes, we have Leticia from Ukozi, but Leticia, please introduce yourself to our audience as to who you are, but also touch on Ukozi. That's fine. I'm Leticia van der Berg. I'm the Group Health and Safety Manager for AFRIMAT, but I also wear a hat of ASPASA member mm -hmm. um, for small-scale mining, and then also the chairperson for the Ukozi um, RTF, um, the chairperson for small-scale mining in Gauteng. Okay, great. And uh, today, proceedings, what's your take on it so far? So far, the collaboration with Ukosi has been magnificent. We've reached 87 mining houses across South Africa, not just in, in Gauteng. Uh -huh. And um, the stats are scary. Uh -huh. Although small-scale mining has low TB cases, uh -huh. we are here for zero harm. Uh -huh. So we are hoping for future collaborations, not just with the council, but with other mining houses as well. Great. Uh, Leticia, you mentioned uh, the, 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 the company that you come from. And if I were to specifically zoom um, into that, what initiatives is, is you, in, in your company are you putting in place to ensure that we end TB? Uh, we have a very fractured health structure within AFRIMAT, but we pull it together through my department, where we monthly have our um, awareness campaigns and we roll it out across South Africa within AFRIMAT. Mm -hmm. So we go mostly with national health initiatives, but also through the Mine Health and Safety Council and Minerals Council initiatives which includes TB, diabetes, your general um, health management, and HIV and TB. Okay, last question for you. Tell us a little bit about UKOSI, RTF. UKOSI? RTF, which actually stands for Regional Tropical Forum. And we tend to use the acronyms a lot, and yes. we may lose a few, a few people there. So UKOSI fits into the Mine Health and Safety Council um, platform. Um, that is where it, it, it's born from. It started within ASPASA, mm -hmm. but then ASPASA cannot run and therefore they start asking uh, members to partake in the process. So Ukosi consists of all the small-scale mining um, in um, Gauteng mm -hmm. and there is a STEERCOM which um, consists of the DMRE, the Mine Health and Safety Council, organized labor mm -hmm. and employers. Okay. And that STEERCOM then determines um, what we're going to focus on and then we meet quarterly to share any health and safety information, mm -hmm. new practices, new forms, right any legislation in that platform. And what would be your highlights from the RTF or your achievements? Maybe that you may want to brag about to other RTFs out there. <laughs> well, from attendees from five to, to um, 73, our last one we had virtual and hybrid, there were 73 attendees. Yeah. And also knowing that we've helped 
one man owned small industry members. The DMR phones me as a chairperson and asks to help those individuals. So you know you are helping to, to creating a safe and healthy environment. Leticia, thank you so much and thank you for hosting us as the Mind Health and Safety Council in ensuring that we have a successful event. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks. And now we have Mr. Mandla Mastangu. Sir, how are you? I'm good and how are you? I'm good, uh, thank you. Thanks, um, I would like you to do a better job than I have of introducing yourself. Oh, my name is Manda Masamo. I'm project manager for Masoise Health Program, which is a mineral cancer-led uh, initiative on health response, especially on TB and HIV, occupational lung disease and, and NCDs. Okay. Uh, you mentioning Masoise. How, what is the importance of Masoise being part of this event, <coughs> uh, Mind Health and Safety Council uh, commemoration? Um, Masai is a health program actually is just like the Department of Health being the, corners, uh, uh, the cornerstone of uh, TB and HIV. So Masai is also playing that role in the mining industry. Okay. It started uh, in 2016 as Masai ETB, but mm -hmm. then now it, we started inclu uh, uh, including uh, uh, HIV, mm -hmm. uh, occupational lung diseases, and non-communicable diseases. So okay. this is what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we help all the mines. Now the program is now a wellness program, actually instead of just a TB program. Okay. We encompassing all the uh, wellness issues that are important in uh, the health of the miners. Okay, yeah. and what highlights can you uh, maybe share with us with regards to the achievements of the great milestones that Masai has reached? Uh, you know, especially on TB, uh, we, the, the, the target was that we wanted to be to have an uh, infection rate that is lower than that of the country. Mm -hmm. So now, from our 2020 annual report, we reported uh, 220 per 100,000 uh, uh, employees okay. who, ha who have been screened for TB. Mm -hmm. So this is an achievement because we are now you know, moving to zero new infections on TB. Okay. Yeah. And um, in, in, in terms of the future initiatives, that Masoyi say uh, uh, could, could be saying or doing for the industry. Are you able to maybe let us in on that as to what, what into, looking into the future, what, is, what, what are the initiatives? You know, I actually um, advocating for TB contact tracing okay. because it helps us to eliminate TB. So if maybe all uh, in, uh, companies can uh, embark on TB contact tracing, mm -hmm. that will help a lot because if maybe an employee is found to be HIV, uh, TB infected in the workplace, then we go to their workplaces in peri community, my, uh, in peri community. Sure. then we can be able to, you know, reach out to those people that have not been, that has, have not had an opportunity to be screened. Okay. Then we go to them in their communities, in the comfort of their houses. Then, mm -hmm. I mean, we can reach as much people and we can be able to eliminate this deadly disease. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for your time and thanks for joining us uh, in this uh, TB World TB Day commemoration. Thank you very thank you much, Sandra. Thank you. And thank you so much. Uh, we will definitely be uh, interviewing more people later on and stay tuned.
Tabata stakeholders. And next to me, I have Mr. David Nsiza, uh, but I think he will do a better job of introducing himself than I can. No, thank you, Ms. Peters, uh, and good, uh, uh, good day. My name is uh, David Nsiza. I'm the Chief Inspector of Mines and also the Board Chairperson of the Mine Health and Safety Council. Great, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Nsiza, can you please share with us uh, the importance of the Mine Health and Safety Council commemorating World TB Day for the South African mining industry? No, thank you, Masanda. I think that's an important question. I think as the as a sector, the sector has a, an unfortunate legacy of loss of life uh, because of occupational health and safety and mine-related uh, hazards and risks. One of the key things that was previously not focused on in the sector has been the health uh, issues. In fact, there are more people who lose their lives because of health, more specifically because of TB, HIV, and AIDS, and recently because of COVID-19. So it's very important that we should come together uh, and, 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 and also review the, the, the progress that has been made in terms of the milestones that we've agreed upon. Previously, we came up with the milestones uh, to improve on health and safety, but critically to ultimately achieve the goal of zero harm. So today's presentation, uh, they will have seen that there's progressive trends that have been indicated mm -hmm. by the colleagues, including Dr. Mokowot as well. However, we are not, we are not there, especially with, with TB. And if you look at pulmonary TB cases, I mean, mm -hmm. 2010, there were more than 4,000 cases reported. They came down to 2020, but our goal is zero, zero harm. So I think, I think it's very important that we come together and say, we are here now, uh, our ultimate goal is zero, zero harm. How do we make sure that we improve on that? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Sousa, looking at the stats that have been shared um, by uh, the various stakeholders, how close or how far do you think we are as the industry to achieve the goal of zero harm? You know, I always say that, you know, that the numbers, they don't lie. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but most importantly, the numbers represent human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the most important values that we've agreed upon as a sector, it has been caring and dignity and respect for, for human life. Mm -hmm. you know, for us, it's very important that we appreciate that behind the numbers, uh, there are human beings, mm -hmm. uh, also we are mine workers and their families as well. So there has been great initiatives and mm -hmm. interventions that have been presented. Uh, I think they will assist us to continue in, in significant improvement. But for me, mm -hmm. what is also important is that, um, you know, it, when the mining charter was introduced, we have pushed as the Mine Health and Safety Council that they must also, it must also have an element of health and safety. What was also important there is the living conditions of mine workers, because historically mine workers used to live in hostels and, and that also uh, make a huge impact on TB and HIV and, and AIDS. Mm -hmm. So the sector has gone a long way to improving on that. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we can go further if we improve the living conditions of mine workers. In fact, earlier I made a, a, an example to say, if you drive to uh, the eastern limb of the Bushfell complex, the platinum mines in Rustenburg, mm -hmm. you will see that since the, some of the mines have introduced the, the, uh, the, the, the the accommodation schemes, their mines, yeah. some of the mine workers moved into informal settlement. Uh -huh. yeah. That does not help in what we are to achieve uh -huh. in terms of, of TB and HIV and AIDS. So it's very important that we also look at that element. 24 uh -huh. hour life of a, of a mine worker, what do they do when they are at home uh, if we are going to achieve this goal of zero harm and significant impact, impact on TB? Great. Last question for you. As the MHSC board chairperson, we are in a tripartite uh, structure. What role do you think the tripartite uh, uh, um, structure or the representative can play uh, in, in ensuring that we end TB, TB in line with the theme for this year? I think the, the role that we play, and I always refer back to the Mine Health and Safety Act. You know, mm -hmm. When it was introduced in 1996, the forefront matter was to ensure that there's collaboration or tripartism. Mm -hmm. For us, it was very important. Mm -hmm organized labor, business, state, we work together mm -hmm. on health and safety. And, and since then, there's been significant reduction mm -hmm. in the challenges that we've experienced. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the lowest fatalities, 2019 lowest diseases, injuries in 2020, a significant improvement on mitigating factors on COVID-19. So I think we just have to continuously collaborate mm -hmm. and as through the Mine Health and Safety Council, come up with impactful uh, uh, interventions mm -hmm. that will ultimately ensure that we achieve 
prepare the goals that we've set ourselves, which are also aligned to the NSPO, the National Strategic Pl uh, 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 Framework or Plan of the Government. Great. Um, Mr. Misuza, thank you so much for your time and thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank Great. You. Thank you so much uh, to uh, everyone watching and uh, back, I think we are now back into the program. Thank you. to switch on his video so that you could see him. He is the Chief Executive Officer of SAPCOA and Head of Secretariat for Private Sector Forum. Further, he has a PhD. He is actually a PhD candidate in economics with the University of Cape Town. He's also a sec secured a future, the future fellow, a joint program between Morehouse School of Medicine and National School of Public Health in Medical University of South Africa, developed by the United Nations to train African students on HIV AIDS management and financing. The presentation that is going to share with us is on the private sector campaign feedback. Welcome, Mr. Jiguana. Welcome to, the, um, to this venue and the podium. And the floor is yours. Please grace us with your presentation. Thank you very much. Can you please unmute on our behalf so that yeah, we can hear you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you very much. You can share your presentation. Right. Uh, no, Chair, uh, there is no presentation. Like I'm just mm -hmm. going to walk the team through the, I mean, the, the whole campaigns. Thank you. You can proceed. All right. I'm going to switch off my camera now. Lovely. Uh, once again, let me... It just followed, I mean, to the uh, the previous speakers, uh, sending my apology for not being able to be there physically. Uh, there, there is quite a number of, I mean, of conviction things that forced me to be here, which I shared with, I mean, with, with Flo and the team. Let, let me start, Chair, by just outlining to the team and everybody in the area. What, what is SAPCOR? Just in case there is, I mean, people who do not know about SAPCOR. I will also just touch on the role that SAPCOR plays within the, sub, I mean, the, the SANA private sector forum and look at our role that we play within the, in terms of all the, I mean, the, the campaigns under SANA. I'll make sure Chair, that I wrap up all this within the five minutes. I mean, uh, of the time allocated to me. Subcoa was established more than twenty years ago as a, an organization that is responsible for coordinating the private sector response on HIV and AIDS. As we may all know, that back in the days. Uh, the the response by government on HIV and AIDS, I would say it was kind of staggering to to some extent. So private sector jumped in by providing antiretroviral therapy to the employees. 
This is mainly based on the fact that there is a clear understanding and a clear relationship between the state of health of employees and the economy. So given that direct relationship, I mean, there was a need for the employers in South Africa to provide therapy in order to save um, the, 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 the economy. So SAPCOA was established around that time to ensure that there is a proper coordination of private sector I mean, response. This is a member organization. What it, mean, what it means then program director is that in our DNA, it's, we live by our members by ensuring that we can provide them with guidance around the interventions. Uh, in the ISANAC private sector engagement strategy, which is the series of strategies that are developed by SANAC for the engagement with all the sectors, uh, they recommended that SAPOA, I mean, must be a, a secretariat to the private sector forum. Some of the colleagues that are, I mean, in this forum, they may have heard the presentation that I once made regarding the, the, the private sector forum, but I'm going to repeat it once again. Private sector forum was launched by Deputy President on the 11th of June in 2021. As we all know, the coordination of, I mean, uh, uh, and the implementation of HIV and AIDS is based on a tripartite alliance, which is government, which is civil society, and which is private sector. We know what government has been doing through SANAC. We know the action which has, I mean, the, the civil society, it has been embarking upon. We don't know what private sector, I mean, it has been doing, despite the fact that everybody can, I mean, can talk about the history of implementing, I mean, the, these programs. The manner at which we've been working as a private sector, it has been very transactional. It has been very sporadic. So the, hence there was a call from SANAC to ensure that private sector can be organized so that it can fulfill and swell its ranks within SANAC and facilitate the implementation of the national strategy plan on HIV and AIDS and TB. So when the forum was launched on, I mean, uh, on the 11th of June last year, this was a product of an engagement that the SABCOA together with the presidency, the Department of Health, and Sanak embarked upon to consult all the different business formations. We consulted with, I mean, with BUSA, we consulted with, with BBC, we consulted with South African Informal Traders Association, we consulted with South African Waste Speakers Associations, we also engaged the Council for Medical Schemes. As such, with all these consultations in these different, I mean, uh, organizations, we nominated members who will sit in the private sector forum. So the composition right now of private sector forum is 24 members. There, there is seven that are coming from BUSA. There is seven that are coming from all the member organizations from BBC. There is five that are coming from uh, Council for Medical Schemes, representing the, I mean, the, the insured and, and the schemes. There are two that are coming from the informal economy between I mean, CITA and SAUPA. So our role is, I mean, as subcore within the private sector forum, is to play a secretariat role. That secretariat role, which means it's, we facilitate this machine to move. If an order doesn't move, it means that, I mean, our, our role as subcore we failed. So this is the partnership and the role that, I mean, uh, and the role that we play in ensuring that private sector forum, it achieves its objective of being a coordinator for fighting all the epidemics in the private sector. That is 
HIV, AIDS, TB, and STI, that is gender-based violence, and that is, I mean, COVID-19. We launched, I mean, after the launch of, I mean, the, the forum, we developed a strategy. That strategy, it focused amongst other things. I would just mention two, which I believe they, I mean, they, they are linked to this discussion and the people around. What we know is that there is a lot of data that is in the private sector, which we need a central point at which that data can be collected. This is the data that we know it is probably sitting amongst the various wellness service providers that are contracted. What it then means is that we need to make sure that we can mirror all the different data sets that are used. These are the, the data sets that are used by Council for Medical Schemes, which I'm definitely sure this is a good data that we can get in there because schemes are mandated, are mandated by through the regulations by CMS to collect this information. The, Dr. Balfour mentioned, I mean, and, and uh, and, and Dr. Mkono, the IDMR 64. We need to also to pull in the data that I mean that that is collected. I mean through that process. A program director mentioned the the non-communicable disease. It is important that we can collect also that I mean that data on non-communicable disease. And the last one is this country has got a responsibility in terms of the treaties that are signed. So this data is reported through ILO. We've got to, I mean, to bring all these four data sets into one. This is now a requirement in terms of our relationship within SANAC that when this data is collected, it's going to be collected and and assembled through Subcore, and we have to report to the NAS, I mean, SANAC NAV Center. By doing so, we are able then now to say what is the rate to understand the rate of infection within the private sector in general. Otherwise, right now, nobody knows. The numbers that you see in there, these are the numbers that are reported by Sanat through, I mean, its interactions. The second one is the development of MNE framework. As Mr. I've said, Mr. we've Gwana, developed this strategy. Mr. Uh, Gwana, our, can we kindly give you just a few minutes to summarize. I will give you three minutes to summarize. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll run. I mean, Chair. The we need to develop the MNE framework. That MNE framework. It. I mean, it has to be discussed with all the sectors. As part of the. I mean, the the, the campaigns on TB. Subcoa sits in the organizing committees of all the major, I mean, the, the, the events, the checking pillow, I mean, events, which are, are through the SANAC. Uh, we participated fully, I mean, in the preparations and the planning of World TB Day. There are three things that, I mean, that, that came up, I mean, in our engagement. One, it was the request, I mean, by that private sector must contribute towards the legacy project. The second one, it was the request, I mean, for the, I mean, the the track that would be used for the door-to-door -door campaigns and meeting with all the TB ambassadors in the province. The third one, it was the digital X-rays with Gene experts, and the fourth one was around a, a cup of mind to, I mean, to host us for the engagement with, the, I mean, with, with the deputy president. Jefferson, um, let me run through the last one. It is important to, I mean, for the team to realize that Deputy President has started with the engagements in, I mean, in all the provinces. The Northern Cape was the fourth one where he engages with civil, I mean, with civil society, that is the faith-based organization and the traditional healers. So, I mean, this, we, we added, I mean, in this schedule that he must include the, I mean, the, the private sector. So we had the engagement, I mean, on the 23rd uh, with the private sector program, which was led by, Doc, I mean, Dr. Dipalisa, which she did, a, I mean, a fantastic job. Private sector was represented by Dr. Balfour. Something that came out of that engagement was a pledge which Deputy President, I mean, indicated 
said the ikapa mine needs to drive one was that there is a target of screening and testing 25000 people in 3 months in, in northern cape that's the responsibility i mean we've got to i mean we've got to do as private sector Mr. that was given also to them unfortunately the we'll have to let you go uh, but thank you very much for the presentation if you could just maybe write us you know just a detailed note that we can send to the attendees both virtually and physically especially on these pressing matters and you are actually putting out a very important point across all of us that we need to work together and have information systems all over. There's no point if the private sector has their own information and the state doesn't have any information and we are unable to get the rates. So if you could put that down for us and ensure that as part of the training that we're going to go on ahead, together with the Mind Health and Safety Council and together with the Mineral Council, these matters are addressed in great detail in the platform. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jikwana, for the enlightenment Thanks. and the wonderful speech. Our next presenter is Ms. Letitia van der Berg. She is here in person. She is Head of Health and Safety of Afrimet Mine, a member of Aggregate and Sand Producers Association of South Africa, the chairperson of the Houghton Ukozi RTF, and a member of the Houghton Regional Women in Mining Committee. Mm, I just need to get uh, her details. You know, women in mining? Yeah, 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 yeah. Presentation is basically on Houghton Ukozi feedback on TB campaigns. Welcome, Ms. Letitia. The floor is yours. Audible. Thank you. Just observing protocols of the physical attendees and also the online attendees and a very special thank you to my small scale mining employers today. You might see empty chairs and think, hmm, not a good outcome, but I hope my presentation will change your mind. And we are here today because, or I am here today because of a sincere interest in the well-being, the overall well-being of the employee. And if we can all have that starting point, um, we can go a long, long way. And I also chose my career based on that sincere interest in the well-being of an individual. And in the mining paternity, when I started in 1998, I've grown with the DMR, I've grown with the council, I've grown with small-scale mining. We've come a long, long way. Thanks, Lester. And you can go to the next one. So I, I have to accumulate my steercom of Fukusi, the regional par, um, par, par, um, tripartite, which um, are those individuals. And the DMR is helping us to drive this. And if that was not the case, we would not have made a success of it. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Masisa, and the entire DMR, Mr. Um, Mpo, for always sending well representation from the DMR and bringing the challenges to us um, from a Gauteng perspective. Thank you, next slide. So, Ukosi um, RTF small scale mining. So yes, we have a resource problem, but also understand that we do know how to manage that resource shortage. We might not have a budget specifically for HIV and TB, but it's within our occupational hygiene and health budget. Um, and we, on each clinic visit, there is a little bit of HIV, a little bit of TB, and a little bit of chronic health management. And we multitask. Um, we don't just do, the manager is not just the manager. He's at times the doctor, contacting his employee, finding out how are you doing today? Um, we haven't seen you in a while. Is everything okay? That comes from the operation, from the manager. The manager is sometimes the psychologist to find out during the COVID period, 
are you still okay? Virtually, we don't see you anymore, but are you doing, doing well? Then the geographical spread. Yes, it's a huge challenge. But I will show you today how we close that by having just a few key people here today. We've reached quite a few um, small-scale mines already and making a change like that. Yes, economic constraints. One of my mentors said to bring my mind up to speed. We sell a product that's equal to a loaf of bread. I can actually say e equal to a liter of petrol. Okay. <laughs> so don't expect us <laughs> to have an automated mobile clinic there every single day. We can't do it. But we find a solution within it economically. So we, we do try and, and fit whatever we have in our resource and uh, also still comply to the same Mine Health and Safety Act like the large scale mines. And then our statistics is manual. I would have wanted to present to you today how many TB tests that we do from the 11th of March up until today, but because of manual processes, I still have to wait one more week. Okay, so the mine knows who needs to be referred, but from an escalated Ukosi Steercom member, I have to wait a little bit. And then our product. You could brush your teeth today because of us. You could decor with aggregates. You go home. We provide you with a safe home with all our products. And then you eat your vegetables and you make your vegetable patch because we do agri agricultural lime and also fertilizers. That is the products we are, pre we are producing, not diamonds and gold, which is also precious and beautiful. But we give something that's more closer to you and you can take it home. Thank you, Lester. So the Mine Health and Safety um, Ukosi Tripartite TV collaboration, the Ukosi platform or the RTF platforms is a central point where we can share information. And we did it very, very well in the past. And the more we can get the smaller mines that's not as far as our members to come. And again, DMR, thanks, thank you. You've brought non-ASPASA members, which are still present or, or attending our, our sessions, and that helps them considerably because they've got less resource than an AFRIMAT or AFRISAM or a RAUMI. And then the tripartism. We get to know each other on a personal level, not getting buddy buddies because the DMR inspector will stop you if you don't follow the rule, but we get to know each other and work better together. And then reaching a wider spectrum um, of the mining houses and communities. And then the collaboration. So the Mine Health and Safety Council approached me and we decided to do this collaboration. And I just want to say thank you very much for considering us because we might just have one TB case within AFRIMAT with 2,300 employees, but what that one individual could have um, passed on the disease to multiple others and we also strive for zero harm. So thank you very much um, that, that we as an AFRI mat and the small scale mining, although our TB cases is low, that we can also make a difference. Thank you, Lester. So that this is just um, where we introduce to the small scale mines a few photos of the Mine Health and Safety Council work that has taken place on the 11th of March and where we then um, hooked the small scale miners, thanks for coming to come and fetch your TB, HIV and COVID um, pamphlets because they got the resource for free and um, 73 participants attended, 49 um, physically and about 39 virtually. Thank you, Lester. So this is how we reached a bigger um, uh, industry. So there's the, the mines just in alphabetical order. In Gauteng, we've reached 22 mines in 22 different communities. Uh, we've reached 66 other mining houses in other regions, and we've reached 87 mines altogether across South Africa just by this one connection point of the Ukosi RTF. And you can see collaboration. You work smart, not hard. Um, and even the communities, yes, we don't have a mobile setup there to do TB screening, but our employees do take the information home and share it within their communities, and that do. It, it does make a difference. Thank you, Lester. And here's just a few examples of the mines that collaborated with us and formally said they will feedback, which is AFRIMAT. And you can just flip through Labucon. That's one of the smaller, smaller, um, upper, um, small scale mines. AFRISAM. And then Raumix as well, partaking in the process. One more, Lester. Yeah, and Lafarge. Lafarge has got one dormant mine in the Vol, 
but they also participated um, in other regions. And then, yes. We have about um, three minutes. That's my last slide. So collaborating with the Corsi and our spas, are, um, please do it more. We are willing. Um, we might not be able to, to give you um, fancy statistics, but we will be able to make a difference and impact at our minds. And we might not have the resources um, or the market, but we have resilience, passion and heart with multiple talents. And again, thank you very much for, for giving us this opportunity. And we're looking forward to the, the next one. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Ms. Leticia. And that shows a great initiative on behalf of what you guys have been doing. Now we are going to come to messages of support. I think we need them greatly um, in what we do. You know, support is quite an important thing to motivate the people to continue to work hard and find innovative ways to make a difference. We're going to first start with a message of support from Mr. Mutoko Zizi Zondi from the state. He's a deputy chief inspector of mines at the Department of Mineral Mining and Resources. And his responsibilities include the management of health, the management of health and safety Pardon me, pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, those technical issues, I think we are used to. We do get them every time when we are, you know, Vodacom disappears all the time. As I was saying, the management of health and safety in Limpopo, Mpumalanga, the Free State, and the Eastern Cape Regional Offices. He is also chairperson of the Commission of Engineers in June 2013 and a board member of the Mining Qualifications Authority and Mine Health and Safety Council. At the Mine Health and Safety Council, he chairs the Mining Regulatory Advisory Committee and the Mining Occupational Safety Advisory Committee. So welcome, Mr. Zondi. If you could just grace us with your presence on the podium. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Uh, uh, program director and uh, let me start uh, by acknowledging all the leadership uh, from organized labor uh, employers and business uh, present here today as well as uh, uh, state uh, the manager and safety council chairperson under the leadership of uh, Ubabum Caesar and uh, the board members that uh, are present here today uh, the MHSC executive management and staff uh, Ukozi, a regional tripartite forum under the leadership of Umise uh, van uh, van der Berg. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, good morning. Good morning. Melang, Sanbonan. As uh, the program director has alluded that uh, I'll be pledging a, measure, a message of support uh, on behalf uh, of, of the state. And uh, if you recall uh, in the presentation that was made uh, by Dr. Balfo, uh, she highlighted that uh, in the past 18 months, about 95,500 South Africans have died due to, due to TB. And that was really a shocking number to me that so many lives have been lost uh, due to TB. And uh, in spite of the fact that uh, TB is curable if, uh, if one takes uh, the, the medication. And uh, the Department of Health uh, decided on the TB uh, strategy, which is 90, 90, 90. And I must say that uh, our sector is also aligned to the national uh, uh, TB uh, strategy. 
and Dr. Mkoboto also highlighted that the mining sector has been facing dual epidemics, which is mainly a TB and HIV, and later we all know uh, the challenge of face uh, with regard to, to COVID-19. And uh, it's important uh, that uh, the sector has an integrated approach in terms of uh, the management uh, of, uh, of TB and, and HIV. And I must also stress that also uh, this year's theme, uh, which is the uh, invest in action to end TB, HIV, and COVID-19, I think also support uh, the integrated management of, uh, of TB and HIV. Uh, Dr. Mkobot also shared with us that uh, the screening has improved in the sector. I think she, she said it improved from 72% uh, to about uh, 99%, and I speak under correction. And uh, secondly, that there has also been a decline in uh, the TB incidence uh, cases in the mining sector to about uh, 312 cases uh, per 100,000. And what I'd also like to stress is that it's important that all stakeholders uh, they must work together in the elimination of TB, HIV, and lately uh, COVID-19. And uh, we have also seen uh, quite a few good examples that uh, were presented uh, in the UCOS RTF presentation by uh, Ms. Van der Berg. And uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Zondi. Our next message of support is going to be virtually presented by Mr. Nikisi Lisufi. Uh, he is a senior executive, um, environmental health and legacies at the Mineral Council of South Africa. He served at the Department of Water Affairs and Forestry in various capacities, deputy director of water quality Director of Water Resources Management and Head of the Regional Office in the Free State. He will be representing the employers. Oh, there he is. Welcome very much, uh, Mr. Nikisi, um, to the podium. Thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. The floor is yours. Thank you, Program Director. I need to apologize again for not being able to be there in person, but I'm with you guys in spirit. So thanks to the program director, the chief inspector of mines, the chairperson of the Mine Health and Safety Council, the acting CEO of the Mine Health and Safety Councils, principals from the employers, the state and organized labor, and distinguished speakers and delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed an honor for me and a privilege for me to give this message on behalf of, uh, of employers. I would like to congratulate the Mine Health and Safety Council for once again ensuring that uh, we have a successful commemoration of World TB Day. And we do this in a collective effort. This year's event shows even greater collaboration and and, and cooperation with the Mine Health and Safety Council, the Ukozi Houghton Regional Tripartite Forum, uh, Organized Labor, SAPCOA, ASPASA, Minerals Council, SAMDA, and Masoe Ise, all making an input in the organization of this event. This is highly commendable as we can only overcome this disease if we mount a united and a collective effort. As the speakers have alluded to, there's still a good reason for us to raise awareness on TB and to commit to greater action and investment to eliminate this disease. The Deputy President uh, of South Africa, Mr. David Mabuza, led the national commemoration in the Francis Bart District Municipality in the Northern Cape. The mining industry was very visibly in, was very visible in the commemoration as Kimberley a copper mine hosted the event. It was heartening to hear how the mine cancels over 100% of its employees for HIV and screens 100% of them for TB, while more than 80% of its employees 
have had at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. This is an exemplary mine that has met the industry's, in the, the, the industry's milestones on TB and HIV and is well on its way to meet the Minerals ta uh, Council target of fully vaccinating 80% of the employees. The Deputy President challenged the Northern Cape Premier to screen and test an additional 25,000 citizens within three months. He further requested that the private sector and mining companies in the Northern Cape to assist the Premier in this task. As a key stakeholder in that province, we will take up this challenge under the leadership of the provincial government and coordinate and facilitate mining companies to live up to their obligation. So to get back to today's event, we are gathered here to celebrate the mining industry's commemoration of World TB Day under the theme, Invest in Action to End TB, HIV and COVID-19 in the South African mining industry now. A big question to ask ourselves is how far are we to end in this epidemic? I will start with our progress on COVID-19. As Dr. Bafa has indicated earlier on, we are on target to reach our 80% target as planned as the Minerals Council. However, we still think that there's still scope for people to be encouraged uh, to vaccinate. According to statistics, 73.5% of employees in the industry have been cancelled for HIV in 2020. Although this is not yet 100% as per our milestones, we have been making progress over the years. Let us not be discouraged, but push on to achieve the 100% counseling of employees this year. Even those that know their status should still be counseled. Regarding TB, great strides have been made in reducing TB rates in the, in the industry. Our milestones we aspire to are at or below the South African TB incident rate. Since 2016, the industry has achieved this target. We should, however, not think that our work is over. South Africa has a very high TB rate and is part of the 30 high burden countries in the world, as Tutula has alluded earlier. We should thus aim to eliminate TB in our industry and achieve the healthy work worker effect, which states that those who are employed have a better health than the unemployed. To achieve this higher target, we need to go back to the determinants of TB in mining. Those are exposure to silica dust, dust and HIV infection. On, a on HIV infection, we have seen very good stories from companies that had very comprehensive HIV prevention and treatment programs, where employees were trusted and treated. Um, can we kindly give you three minutes to wrap up? Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, the industry had made huge investments uh, in, 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 in the TB treatment program. The Masoise Health Program, our flagship program, is a flag bearer in the mining industry in terms of ensuring that uh, our TB management program are focused and our wellness programs are, are, are effective. Other countries have been almost been able to eliminate TB and we should not be defeated from, we should not be deferred from that dream. In the short term, we need to integrate our approach to disease management. This will not only benefit the recipients, our employees, but will also lead to more efficient utilization of resources. Program Director, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard today how much progress has been made in reducing TB. Let us take this to the next level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your words of encouragement. Our next uh, message of support is coming from organized labor, Mr. Nico van Royen. He is present here with us. He's recognized from organized labor to be a sector manager of UASA for gold, diamond, platinum mines. He has previously served at the Human Resources Advisory Committee as well as MREC of the Mine Health and Safety Council. Welcome, Mr. Nico van Royen. The floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I, should, I hope you realize that I'm here on behalf of four unions, so I will take four times, my, uh, four, uh, times the time I should have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like the Thank you. Um, <laughs> Master of Ceremonies, Mr. David Masiza, Chief Inspector of Mines. 
executives from the council, colleagues of organized labor, and all protocols reserved. Um, over the last two years, it became quite clear that an urgent pandemic shift is required from a reactive way of managing uh, pandemics and tuberculosis to a proactive behavioral based culture and attitude towards pandemics within the South African mining industry. Let me start off with one of the fundamental principles of health, and that is that healthcare is everybody's business. It would even go further to say that preventing uh, prevention of TB should be a way of living and a culture amongst all of us in the workplace. This event here today should be deemed as uh, should not be deemed as a mere another show or as a window dressing, but should represent proof that all involved do need um, do indeed regard health and safety as everybody's business. What we have experienced over the last two years and the way the mining industry handled the pandemic from reactive st strategies and attitudes towards behavioral based proactive culture amongst management and employees within the industry should be a guideline for handling health from now on. Critically important, the, strate the strategies emphasized here today taking cognizance of what we have learned over the last two years, such as testing and taking part in an active medical program with or without the fear of victimization, forms the basis for cultivating a, uh, cultivating a sustainable risk management culture through the industry, empowering people to respond to activities appropriately and to enable them to predict, prevent and control health from now on. Continuous risk management is an indeed uh, an innovative approach in the managing of health to our people in the workplace. It further entails a shared visible uh, process aimed at eliminating at-risk behavior, creating an enabled health climate to develop sustainable non-discriminatory attitudes. Some of the other very important and key objects involved should be creating a risk competence within the in entire workforce, installing visible health leadership as a value, recognizing and rewarding voluntary testing behavior and persons being proactive, creating a more enabled environment by, uh, by removing systems barriers to health behavior. Behavioral-based safety is the obvious next logical step in the process of continuous improvement and is an essential prerequisite for world-class performance. Health and safety should not only be about the reduction of incidents, injuries, and fatalities, but also about total elimin eliminating it through proactive non-risk health behavior. It is also about the ability of management to influence and control the behavior of people as we have learned through the COVID-19 pandemic. It is furthermore important to remember uh, that health and safety can only be attained through teamwork and healthy employees, employee relationships in the workplace. Total commitment and most important by changing the behavior of people to benefit themselves. This is essential because the finest systems and equipment cannot function effectively not correctly applied, if not correctly applied, applied and monitored. And the most vigilant strategies will fail if not supported by aligned health behavior and attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, tuberculosis have orphaned ma too many children, whether too many um, women and they devastated too many families. And that is why we need many more initiatives such as this program within our industry. As we heard this morning that TB have killed more people than COVID, so yeah. With the COVID pandemic, all of us lost our focus on TB and it's time to refocus again. I want to close by quoting some words from our previous president, Mr. Nelson Mandela. And he once said, my country is rich in minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil. But I have always known that its greatest wealth is its people, finer and truer than the finest diamonds. Behavioral based safety is indeed about becoming true to real safety and health. 
I wish to pledge on behalf of OASA, the union, organized labor, and our members total commitment towards health and safety and towards the total em elimination of discriminatory practices within the South African mining industry into the future. Let's all declare our status and make prevention our business, our culture, and a way of living. Thank you, Madam MC. I hope it's in time. Thank you very much. You did really do an outstanding job of representing all the organized labors. There are so many. But thank you very much. It's currently only four <laughs> Um Thank you. But now it is time to introduce the most important person in this room. You know, without him, I don't think we'll be sitting here today because he provides guidance, a lot of guidance from the Mind Health and Safety Council. And through him, we have learned, through him, he has brought us together in many different uh, platforms to discuss ways and different ways of combating TB, HIV, COVID-19, oh, even underground issues, you know, hey. And every time we listen to him, we have a world full of knowledge. And his name is Mr. David Caesar. He is here to deliver the keynote address. He is the chief inspector and chairperson of the Mind Health and Safety Council. His keynote address, I cannot shorten at all. He is the boss. No matter what I want to do, he is the boss. So the floor is yours, sir, and thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Program Director, for the great work that you are, you are helping us with uh, today. I think, uh, for me, I always say that it's important and it's always an honor to serve with people like you. By the way, uh, it's not about me, um, it's about working together collectively. And all the milestones that have been demonstrated today by all the presentations and the interventions, it basically shows that uh, collaboration is very important. Uh, one of the things that we've agreed upon is the sector that we can compete on everything, but we can't uh, compete on the health and safety of the mind. And that's mm -hmm. why we've reached some of the significant milestones that we've reached. And uh, we should, I, I think we've put ourselves, you know, some people will say, hey, you put yourself difficult goals. Mining is dirty, dangerous, and so forth. Will you ever achieve zero? Mm -hmm. I'm bullish, in other words, I'm confident that you will definitely so uh, I would also want to further acknowledge the other principals and important stakeholders from organized labor, from business, from the state, uh, from, uh, 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 from mine workers. And I always say uh, that the most imp important people in this sector are the mine workers themselves. And for me personally, I'm really honored to serve uh, with the other colleagues to ensure that Also, the, the community, because they come from communities, they come from fa uh, the families, they leave the uh, home, some of them early in the morning, uh, uh, don't say they do not believe that they come safe, uh, they safe uh, back home, but I think we are getting, the, for me, the, those are the most important thing, uh, people that we also have to really appreciate for the work that they, they, are, they, are, doing, they, are, they are doing. The small scale miners as well. And I'm glad, I mean, you've indicated that uh, we have agreed through the Department of the Mind Health and Safety Council that we must also form the regional tripartite forums, but focus on small scale miners because the challenges that we might experience might be different from the bigger, bigger mines. And it's very important that we engage with ourselves 
people to understand how can we work together with ourselves to make sure that we can improve in hands. Uh, today, uh, we brought that in commemoration of the opportunity to become an Iranian as well. But I also want to, to appreciate all the colleagues from the Minor Health and Safety Council, uh, including MIFEC and MOHEC uh, colleagues. You know, historically, the mining sector has, has an unfortunate legacy of loss of life. I mean, I remember before I started working in the mines more than 30 years ago, one of the things uh, my parents, uh, when I told them I want to go and work in the mines, they say, hey, you will come back alive, <laughs> uh, you know? Because anyone believes that it's very unsafe uh, to, work, uh, to work in the mines. But I think through collaboration at the Manhattan uh, Safety Council, make sure that there's significant improvement, more specifically on, on, on the health matters, because there was no focus there as the, as the sector. In this regard, I also I would like to really to acknowledge uh, the role that Dr. Ndelu, uh, who, who has not been well, I hope I uh, wish a spirit of recovery, and uh, both Dr. Kamkobot and the other colleagues have been, uh, have been assisting us in terms of, of MITEC and, and MOHE. Now, if you look in the last two years, COVID had a huge impact on, the, on our economy, you know, in the, 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 the society at large. Some of us who are very religious, uh, we always pray and uh, say that we are also blessed uh, and we are grateful that we are still here and we are here for a reason. And for me and my colleagues and for all of us, I think one of the reasons uh, that it's very important that we should be here, we must continuously serve our people. You know? We are here South Africans, we must continuously serve our people. Uh, it's very important uh, for us. So the mining sector continuously plays a significant role in terms of the economy. We've seen the last two years that the, the contribution in terms of the GDP has been significant, but because of mine workers who also play a, a significant role. And we've agreed in the previous tripartite summits that it's important that we must have values that we must aspire to. Three of them, which I think are very important for me, are the issues of uh, dignity, respect, and care. And when we say care, and we talk about it, we should not be only talking about it. We must leave those values every day. It's very important that we leave those uh, uh, those uh, those uh, uh, those values uh, uh, every uh, every day in, in the sector. I always say that as long as we are still having cases of TB, HIV, AIDS, loss of life, whether it's health or safety, COVID-19, we still have a long way to go to demonstrate. In the past uh, two, two years, we have held uh, both the TB and AIDS commemoration for the South African mining industry virtually under the, uh, the, the, the strict COVID-19 restrictions. During this time, our industry, like many others, had to adjust uh, the new normal, and we are grateful that uh, with the opportunities that the technology provided, we were able to still realize our mandate of promoting health and safety of the mine employees. Today, with such significant progress that has been made in fighting COVID-19 nationally uh, in our, and in our sector, restrictions have been, have been lifted and we are able to once again gather with some uh, of you physically here at the uh, Kalinian Diamond Lodge and with others joining us virtually. We gather to commemorate a sector, uh, as a sector, the 2022 World TB Day, but observing uh, COVID uh, pro protocols as COVID still exists, as uh, Dr. Balfour and the other colleagues have indicated. In terms of the background of the commemoration, uh, the other colleagues have touched on it. Uh, the World TB Day is commemorated annually on the 24th of March, globally, by the United Nations uh, member states, of which South Africa is part, uh, is part of. It is in recognition of the date in 1882, when Dr. Robert Koch announced the discovery of Mycobacterium TB, a bacterium which causes TB in its many form, forms. A decade later, the, dis the discovery has paved the way towards the diagnosis and cure of TB and to an extent, quick response towards similar diseases such as COVID-19. During the, uh, the fifth occupational health dialogue hosted by the Manor Health and Safety Council, we had a presentation 
on the progress that the world and country has made in developing, developing vaccines uh, for this complex disease called TB. It has become evident that resourcing towards vaccine development in this area is rather important and that more attention needs to be invested in TB uh, as it has since been done towards COVID-19. And in this regard, I would also like to commend the, the sector, uh, Dr. Balfo, when she was talking about the, uh, the, 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 the programs that the, the Minerals Council has been embarking upon, which are comm commendable touched on where we are in terms of vaccination. I think she's indicated that we are currently at 75 percent. We've agreed that our goal is beyond 80 percent in working together with the sector. So I would like to commend the mines and the, the small mines that the, the, the employers are in the South, Af South Africa became commemorating World TB Day in 1996 after the formation of the National TB Control Program to support global and national efforts in raising further awareness on the impact of TB and to step up efforts to prevent, manage, and end the TB uh, epidemic. The Council, or that is the Mine Health and Safety Council, has been hosting annual TB Day commemorations during the month of March. Ending, uh, ending TB, ending TB is, the, is a shared effort that we embrace as the mining industry. Our commemoration as a sector follows the national one that was held in the, in the Francis Park, Park District, municipality in the Northern Cape, as San Gatelli Suk has indicated, a district with a high TB with the pro within the program. Progress and the way forward, as alluded to earlier, the theme of the 2022 World TB Day commemoration for the uh, SEMI is invest in action to end TB, HIV, and COVID-19 in the mining sector, in the mining sector now, and we must strive to, uh, to save lives in alignment with the national and global theme. Uh, in terms of invest in action to end TB in the sector, which means decisively uh, investing our resources including finance, human, and time towards ending TB in the mining sector. The Deputy President, as Ndadeli Sufi has indicated, uh, in his address at the National TB Commemoration campaigns in the Northern Cape, stressed that we cannot continue looking at these uh, pandemics, uh, TB and COVID-19 individually. Uh, we need to an integrated approach in responding to them. Much as has been learned from both uh, uh, pandemics, it is crucial that as we respond to one, we do not ne neglect the other, as the other state uh, colleagues have indicated earlier. We are also aware uh, of the devastating effects of TB, HIV co-infections in our industry, in our industry as, as, as well. And it's important that HIV response is not left behind. In terms of now, uh, uh, it, it emphasizes the fact that time is of essence in responding to pandemics. Uh, the, the World Health Organization uh, statistics uh, tells us that TB remains among the top 10 causes of death worldwide. Uh, uh, as well. I always say that every time we speak about uh, the numbers and we talk on the numbers, we must never lose sight that the numbers that represent human lives, uh, they represent mine workers, and also they are also representing their families. So when we come up with interventions, it's not only to drive down the numbers, but to also to, to save lives of the mine workers in the communities uh, that, they, uh, um, that, they, they, uh, that they are coming from. Our industry, despite uh, many obstacles we continue to face in the plight of COVID-19 pandemic, has progressed relatively well in the milestones that we have set ourselves, as alluded by Dr. Uh, Mukoboto earlier on, also touch on that. And Dr. Mukoboto also touched on the numbers. Uh, where are we uh, in terms of the trends? And I said, uh, as I've indicated as well, it's important that every time we talk about numbers, uh, we must remember that there's a human being behind, uh, behind that number and there are communities and families as well. Please, let's also uh, be, uh, be, aware, uh, be aware of. And I think the other, th uh, the other thing that uh, I think Ubabu Chiguana touched on is, is making sure that we focus on and share information. I fully concur with that sentiment. And uh, let's collaborate uh, with the Mine Health and Safety Council and the department also engage with Dr. Mukoboto because we've agreed with the uh, uh, 
Man of and Safety Council, but we should not only focus on occupational health, but we should also have, uh, uh, focus on other matters that affect the lives of the minors, including public health uh, uh, matters, including non communicable diseases. In fact, we collect that information, we analyze that information, and we, Dr. Mukowoto and the occupational health section of the department, they are doing a great work of also converting that into rates. I think it's very important that uh, as we move on, we must also focus on it, including as well, it's very, very important for me to highlight. Uh, Losses of life, life because of natural and patient health related matters. So let's share those information where we are. Are we, are we progressing or are we not uh, progressing? Through collaborative efforts, we have made significant progress towards achieving our commitments as a sector. Since the establishment of the mining industry, TB, HIV, AIDS uh, advisory committee uh, of the council during December two, uh, uh, 2003, the committee continues to provide sound advice uh, on one, policy related to the prevention and management of TB, uh, HIV and AIDS, two, advice on health research that of late has been conducted through the Center of Excellence, uh, thirdly, on the collection, processing and distribution on health data as collected via the DMR E164, Dr. Mokobot has also touched on it, uh, and, and four, on the implementing uh, of TB and HIV and AIDS initiatives from the Minor Health and Safety Tripartite uh, uh, Summit. This is all done through our tripartite stakeholders, and that I can emphasize that the role that we all play is very commendable, as well as strategic organizations, uh, also our collaborations uh, with SAPCOA and Masoise uh, uh, Health Program. In all this, we have not forgotten the small scale mines. It is for this reason that this year, we wanted to demonstrate our support and commitment to ending TB, HIV, and COVID-19, even in small-scale mines. Hence, in collaboration also with a regional tripartite forum, which consists of primarily small mines, as I highlighted before, the Gauteng uh, Ukozi tripartite. We trust through these partnerships, we are able to appreciate that the fight is enormous. However, together we can definitely win. Uh, as I move towards the uh, closure, as a sector, these are important aspects that we are able, we are aware of and are at the center of our responses uh, to TB. Uh, to those, to, to those, uh, uh, it also we are also reminded that it, uh, TB is also uh, cu uh, curable. We have said it, we have said it in the, in the previous two commemorations that we need to have an integrated approach in responding to TB, HIV, AIDS, and now COVID-19 and through the Mine Health and Safety Council. We continue to gather on the, to, to gather data on the impact of COVID-19, not only on TB and HIV programs, but to the health of, and, and the health of persons with past and present TB, as well those of, of those living with uh, uh, a, 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 a HIV. Finally, the goal is zero harm, as I highlighted earlier. That's our ultimate goal. Uh, 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 that we want to reach, and we believe that it, uh, it's, uh, it's possible. So it's, uh, it's really, really possible. You know, I was looking at the trends, especially on the health trend the other time. And the mines used to report close to about 14, 15,000 patients. It, it came down to just about 2,000 in, in uh, 2020. Uh, we are not where we should be, uh, but we, we are moving on. The mines in the past used to report more than 800. Fatalities. Uh, we are just now uh, hovering between 60 and 70. That's just one. The loss of life is not acceptable, but it only shows that with the collaboration between ourselves, we can achieve, achieve more. We are hold, will be holding the Mine Health and Safety Tripartite Summit uh, later on this year. I think it's very important that we come together as we uh, came together today to reflect on the progress that we have made on the Stones and on the trends uh, that we touched uh, touch on earlier as well, but also come up with other effective measures as the other speakers have highlighted earlier to improve on TB and the other health related matters, including our safety. Now, a question was asked uh, earlier on during the interview uh, what can we do more? And it's been some of the that have said, what further can we do more? sector. So 
already improve on, 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 on TB. I think one of the cri critical issues that we probably have to talk more uh, during the, uh, the summit is the living conditions of men and their families, and obviously the communities around them. I've indicated that the mining sector it continues commendably to make a huge contribution within the sector. But colleagues, some of the conditions that our mine workers are living under is appalling. Uh, it's very important that we improve on, uh, on, on, on that. And I believe that if we improve on that, right, it will also make a huge impact on TB, HIV, and AIDS. Uh, 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 you know. And I must also commend the sector because when the, the, the mining charter was introduced, the sector came up with programs to improve the living conditions of the mine workers, including for those who are living in hostels uh, and so forth, and so forth you know, to make sure that they're livable, they can live with their families. Uh, and they provided them initial provisions if they wanted their own homes. But there, there has been downside to it. And if you look, if you go to the major mining districts, uh, including in the Rastenberg or the Platinum Belt, you know, you can drive down the end floor. You will actually see that there's a lot of mine workers living in informal centers, informal settlements. Those are not only people who are coming to the mines to look for work. Those are mine workers who are ensuring that there's significant contribution to the economy. And this is how they are living. And this is also affecting the issue of TB and AIDS. So I, I, I would like to implore on, on the employers and the mines to also look at this particular matter. If indeed we are saying we are leaving the values of caring, dignity, and also respecting of the, of the, of the, of the life. So, without our program director, I hope I didn't chow most of your time. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> thank you, colleagues, uh, for your attention, and also, once again, well done, colleagues. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. David Musiza. You actually planted a seed and then the roots went deeper and deeper and the branches started to grow, meaning that there is a lot of work that we need to do. We need to go back and reflect and see the different innovations that we can do. You spoke about dignity, respect and care. And ever since HIV has come to being, there's always been that stigma. And I believe that's the reason why people are afraid to come forth, you know, to come forth. With COVID, you know, when you used to sneeze before, we used to say, bless you. Now when you sneeze, we're like, Ish, yeah, man, e -e. Um, but we need to understand that we need to encourage our people to screen and test. No matter which situation we find ourselves in, we need to also treat them with respect. And thank you very much for alluding to the housing that our employees stay in. They come forth, but you know, when you drive down, it shows you a state of poverty. And where there is poverty, thrives TB and HIV. And that is very, very true. Thank you for that one. And oh, by the way, ne, Robert Goff discovered TB in 1882, three centuries ago. You mean we can't eliminate it? We, in the 21st century, I believe we can make a huge difference and ensure that by 2030, according to the WHO and TB strategy, we actually eliminate TB completely. We owe it to ourselves. Three centuries ago when it was discovered, today we owe it to ourselves and to our children and our children's children to end TB. Finally, but not finally because our work is not done, I'm going to introduce Mr. Dumisani Lamini virtually. Can he um, perhaps show himself up there? He is the Chief Financial Officer and the current acting Chief Executive Officer of the Mine Health and Safety Council. And he's here to give us his closing remarks. Um, I can't see you um, quite well. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you, Program Director. It's like you're hiding behind something. 
<laughs> can you see me now? Yes, we can see you now. Mm. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you, program director, stakeholders, stakeholders who were part of the stakeholder briefing earlier today, our tripartite stakeholders, organized business, um, organized labor, Mr. state Damini, representatives. Mr. Damini, can you yes. please put on yes. your video so that we can see you? And while you're talking, if you're comfortable to do that, I know some people prefer to to basically switch off the video. <laughs> but I think you can do all things that at once. <laughs> okay, no, thank you. Program director, stakeholder, who were part of the stakeholder briefing earlier today. Our tripartite stakeholders, organized business, organized labor, and state representatives, uh, mine health and safety council strategic and research partners, MHSC board members, MHSC committee and office, our valuable employees from different mines, uh, whom the commemoration was primarily about, colleagues joining us with us, uh, those uh, joining us visually, uh, on, and all those that are present as well, on behalf of MHSC and our partners, for this commemoration, uh, your Masoise Health Program, the South African Business Coalition on Health and AIDS, and the Houghton Coast Regional Tripartite Forum, allow me to greet you all. And thank you for being present with us up until the end of our 2022 World TB Day commemoration for the South African mining industry. We are deeply moved by your participation in this commemoration and, and the past ones the, the MHSC has held for South African mining industry. Thank you, Dr. Irene Mampa, for directing this meaningful and inform informative uh, commemoration with so much ease and professionalism. Health and safety is our second nature as the mining industry. We are, for this reason, grateful to Carinan Diamond Lodge for ensuring this aspect is taken care of. Thank you for taking us through the COVID-19 protocols and procedures to follow in, in case of an emergency. Unfortunately, TB is a deadly disease that continues to claim lives of people, including mining employees, we are grateful to Mr. Charles Mkumane for ensuring that we do not forget to honor the lives of those who, who we lost, not only due to TB, but to HIV and the COVID-19. May their soul rest in peace, and may, may we continue to show support for people still uh, fighting these pandemics. We would also like to convey our thanks uh, to Ms. Florence Magamba, who on behalf of MHSC Mining Industry TB, HIV and AIDS Advisory Committee, uh, MITEC, reminded us of the importance of the continuing the fight against this deadly disease, uh, for emphasizing the importance for this commemoration, as well as taking us through the theme for this year's event. It is true that we cannot manage what we cannot measure. And we continue to see the importance that data plays in forming a lot of our initiative in the SAMI and in the globe at large, in the globe at large when coming to pandemics. We are grateful, uh, Dr. Lindu Mvusi, uh, Dr. Dipalese Mokoboto, uh, Missy Peleng, um, Mohorosi and also Dr. Balfo for sharing uh, the statistics as collected by various entities on TB, HIV, AIDS and COVID-19. It is truly important to be able to monitor our progress and be able to make informed decisions. It is the data like this that also assist Mine Health and Safety Council in conducting research 
and in advising the minister on health and, uh, on the health of employees. The national campaign on TB have been greatly successful and we are grateful uh, to have been part of them. Thank you, Mr. Siawanga Chibwana, for sharing uh, with us feedback on campaigns and for emphasizing on how our industry plays and can continue to play an important role in the TB and HIV agenda. To the Houteng Ukozi RTF team, it is encouraging to see the work that the small mines are doing to prevent and manage TB and other diseases in the mine. Thank you to the Houteng Ukozi RTF chairperson, uh, Ms. Leticia van der Berg for reflecting on the importance of regional tripartite forums. And thank you for the feedback on the awareness campaigns uh, by the mines. The, the Mine Health and Safety Council remains committed to initiating and supporting the industry initiative that aim to improve the health and safety of employees. Thank you also to our tripartite stakeholders, which are the state, the employers, and organized labor representative for the words of encouragement. We are grateful for the continued con commitment in eradicating these diseases and in walking the talk. You continue to prove that together we can achieve more. Thank you to the chairperson of the board, Mr. Msiza, for the keynote address. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've been reminded that it's not only our industry that has not been able to meet set target in preventing and eliminating TB nationally and globally. Uh, as, well, as well, progress has been hampered more so by the COVID-19 pandemic. We cannot focus on the pandemic, pandemic individually. We were reminded that we need to, we need an integrated approach in responding to the pandemics and that we need to continue practicing basics. Thank you especially speci to our partners for this event, Masoise Health Program, Subco, and Houteng Ukos RTF, Together, colleagues, we can continue to achieve much. Please do reach out to MHSC that we collaborate in future endeavors to improve health and safety in our mines. The, these are in environments that mining employees spend most of their days at, uh, and we need to ensure that their health and safety is not compromised. It is possible, colleagues. Lastly, a heartfelt thank Thank you to you all for being such a great audience. Let's continue raising awareness. Uh, there are colleagues at the exhibition tables with material for you to read, uh, share with the colleagues. The same has been shared via email with the invite. Let's invest to NTB and other diseases colleagues. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, and be healthy and safe. Over you. Over to you, Program Director. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kumisani. Thank you very much. We have reached the end of our program, and I do believe that we learned a lot, and we are going to go back home and reflect, come up with innovative ways to end this TB, HIV, and COVID-19 integration I see the small minds and, and grow. You know, there's like a huge growth potential that we have, that we, I think, we are challenged to do. Thank you very much for our virtual attendees. It was wonderful um, that you graced us with your presence. Thank you very much. We are now going to, um, to move out. Lunch will be served in the garden. For the presenters, can you please remain so that you can receive your gifts? Thank you very much. Be safe when you drive on the roads home. And also our visual colleagues, please keep safe all the time. And thank the Lord above for us living today. Thank you. <laughs>